Hello and welcome back to Lorehammer. My name is Eric. You got Merrick here with you. This is Jordan. Jordan's here. And then joining us today uh, is Jimothy. Mm. Hello. Mantis Shrimp Jim. Mm. Mantis Shrimp King. Gene Sealer Jim. Other Gene others would Jim. call him. I am yeah. known by many names. <laughs> None of which are true. A man <laughs> wears many hats in his lifetime. Yeah. Some of them are made of a fish. <laughs> that look like shrimp or shrimps, <laughs> which are actually shrimp, but <laughs> yeah, but they look like fish. Yeah, they look. It's like just fish to that throw look them like off. shrimp. You just yeah. throw them off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, welcome to Lorehammer, guys. This is our sixty-second episode uh, on Dynastic Legions. Ooh, a Necron so, episode. Uh, yeah, if you haven't guessed, it's about Necron. I've heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones that like uh, are really psychic and travel on craft worlds right no no that's uh that's orcs yeah. ah yeah. right because orcs are the ones <laughs> no, that no, no, do no. all right okay yeah that makes sense <laughs> i'm putting yeah. it together good 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 man i'm glad you're here because if mark and i are liable to say anything so you're here to correct and yeah well sure i mean i've done honest. extensive <laughs> study on orc on necroniums and orc craft or, worlds. Or, or, or yes. Craft world. That's right. <laughs> okay. The dark orc. <laughs> the most notar- notorious. Uh, a mork. I mean, what about those, like, those, those, uh, um, oh man, I lost my train of thought. Exactly. Just like those. <laughs> the tier, like the Tyranid uh, Ultramarines. The Tyranid Ultramarines. The Tyranid Ultramarines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since we're going down this <laughs> this road, my God! <laughs> no, the Tyranids are the ones who are in the space sh- suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The backwards. Yeah, oh, the okay. blue space suits. No, <laughs> no, the different space suits. They they with they're all right about this like horseshoe. they're all about like <laughs> community and egalitarianism <laughs> and oh, castes. That's the oh, Tyranids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys, yeah. you guys are really screwing this Sorry. up. You guys should like we should give do me a podcast, the podcast about this. You should just quit. Don't quit your day The great thing about podcasts, though, is you could just ramble and people will listen. doesn't matter what you're saying. I'm I'm betting at least 80% of all listeners have skipped at this point. Ah. That's my guess. Ah. (laughs) When are they going to talk about something that matters? Mm. So Like the goddamn Orc Craft Worlds. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Before we get into the episode, though, we uh, have to thank all of our new patrons. Whoa. Yeah. Of which there are um, many. Yeah, it turns out if you just threaten people, <laughs> they'll actually subscribe to your Patreon. I think that's just... I think that's 25? I, I think it's illegal, Mark. Holy, that's a lot of new um, patrons. Only if you get a, caught. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's illegal if you don't get caught. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through the list, uh, save all applause to the end. I will make sure I do that. Thank you. Uh, so... These are all the new patrons we've gathered. So Alex, Zach, Ryan, Adam, Danny, Wooly, Rob did an increase, so he's a previous patron person. St. Nick, Ryan, Inyaki, Troy, James, Ben, Joseph, Tom, Lloyd, Ian, Wallace, Jakob, Darren. Jakob. <laughs> <laughs> Sit, paint, and play. Preston, Ivy, Ben, and Jared. Nice. So thank you. Clap, yeah, clap, thanks clap, a lot, clap, everyone. Clap, 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 clap. Yeah. If, if you can spare a dollar a month, please help. Please subscribe to our Patreon. It, it really goes a long way when you got thousands of people doing it. We don't yeah. have that many, though. So Not yet. But, Not yet. but they're someday. growing. Yeah. So please, if you can, like a dollar a month is nothing, but it it's a lot. But it adds us. up for us. So And it means so much more content for you guys yeah that's the thing uh we have some big plans for this new year we're not gonna get into oh, big it. decisions big things <laughs> big but big uh plans. as always that requires money so help us out well either money or you know uranium like activated uranium <laughs> uh-huh. if you want to send that to uh-huh. us we'll right because also... eric knows how to build a nuclear it, bomb. you know what <laughs> don't throw about around countries games. like you know spend all this time and effort yeah. trying to build bombs. all of they iran can't hired. do it but eric knows <laughs> how eric knows no no how. no it's uh. they just don't have the uranium that's, <laughs> that's all. the reason it's mm-hmm. all it's a simple formula <laughs> it's e equals mc squared come on everybody knows it <laughs> all right <laughs> Let's uh, let's get into our episode today. Today we're talking about uh, dynastic legions, 
which obviously is uh, a combination of the words uh, dynasty <laughs> changed into dynastic uh-huh. and the plural form of the word legion changed obviously the then into Latin legio mm, <laughs> into legions. Uh, when uh-huh. you combine the words dynastic and legions together, you <laughs> arrive oh, oh at the <laughs> cut him off, turn cut him off, off. <laughs> shut him down, and turn off his mic. What it means? Initiate his self destruct. <laughs> we need some. We need someone scratching some chalkboard right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's talk about dynastic legions. So the first thing we're talking about is dynasties. And dynasties, um, a Necron, are the former ruling houses of the Necron Tur. Mm-hmm. Uh, so dynastic allegiance usually uh, allegiance used to depend on hereditary means, but loyalty to your dynasty is now a matter of programming. Yeah, it used to be like exactly like you're born yeah, into you're, a house. Yeah, you, you're part of this dynasty. You swear fealty to it, but you know if they die or whatever, you just find someone else or yeah. you leave. And but now that's now, when they were still uh, flesh, flesh and blood. blood. Yeah, they are not anymore though. Now they are just yeah. unfeeling so, robots. <laughs> Do you think that like it's possible for you to build like if you were to build your own dynastic legion, could you build one so that all of the dynasty has actually been killed somehow they're all been erased but there's just this army that follows them still despite the fact they're all dead there's like a, all, the, so all the army is still there but the like, like the, the court le- is yeah. gone yeah master yeah. program could yeah, just take like over I, that's they're just, happened they're just my necron around. list is very similar to that just yeah. there's no necron at all it's all just canoptic creatures and stuff oh my god well then yeah, yeah. just marching around conquering things with yeah, no aim just robot yeah exactly <laughs> They conquered the same planet six times. <laughs> and they're doing another six. They're just going in a circle. They're, just, they're, they're fighting their own themselves. defenses. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, they set up automated defenses. And then they, they go leave and, and they come back like, oh my God, take the planet. Someone has <laughs> taken it from us. Yeah. 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 Classic. So when the Necron Terror became the Necron, the Lords and the court members became the ruling class of the Necron. Mm-hmm. And as the dynasties awake from their great sleep, their Lords rise also, their places having been set in metal millions of years ago. Mm-hmm. Dynasties act independently and have been known to uh, go to war against each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and each one controls a region of space. And this varies greatly in size from a single planet to spanning multiple segmentums. Yeah, yeah, like the Sotek one. It's it's huge when you see it on like a galaxy map. In the galaxy, yeah. yeah. Um, we we've talked about dynasties a whole bunch before, so that's a nice little overview. But if you really want to get into like how dynasties function and like uh, all their hierarchy and all that kind of yeah. stuff, here are ramblings on specifically on dynasties. Yeah, go yeah. listen to uh, episode thirty nine. If uh, th- that'll that'll help a lot. Yeah, it's just it's very connected with this one. Yeah. So uh, one of the very first things, uh, since it's 40K, everything kind of stems from like being able to paint an army and like paint it the way you want it. A lot of like lore you can see gets kind of put into it. So we're going to talk about dynastic markings, which is how uh, dynasties will paint their, their legions and stuff. Yes. Because uh, even though they're dead, soulless robots, they still like a little color, a little pop in their life. They're undead. Oh, of course. Undead soulless robots. Mm. Uh, every dynasty's heraldry, and heraldry is used for lack of a better word because I just didn't want to say colors yeah, over yeah. and over again. Markings. Yeah, yeah markings colors, would be good. Heraldry. Colors. But yeah, they, I don't think like any of their like heraldry is very like what we would think, like knight heraldry. No, it's not at all. It, it's yeah. usually very solid colors. And yeah. So each, each dynasty's colors or markings are unique, and they use the science of living metal to achieve notable noticeable differences between dynasties. So while there are color differences between them, uh, cryptics have been able have also been able to modify the composition and texture of the living metal to satisfy the prideful appetites of the pharaohs they serve. Yeah. It, so you can make like cryptons can make the living metal look like ceramic. Yeah. Or marble. Yeah. Or S- anything. So so they're not actually painting their guys then. It's no. all just it's they, manipulating yeah. the living metal itself. Yeah. Which is very different. Yeah. Got to get that polychrome going on. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Just like no color. Just reflects everything. That's it. Fanta black. Fanta black. Okay. You guys No, can't. they'd be sued. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Of course. 
guys made fun of me for wanting to do my guys in that color. <laughs> <laughs> what, Vanta Black? Yeah. Did you want It was to? just a cool idea, so we had to make fun of it. I wa- Yeah, I was going to paint my, my like, Vanguard Marines oh, yeah. in Vanta Black. Because oh, they're, the like, Phobos stealthy. Guys? Yeah, they're stealthy oh. boys. They're stealthy boys. I, I got made fun of for, like, 45 minutes for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even uh, remember that why. That about right, actually, for our friend group. Uh. Every Necron bears an age-old symbol, its meaning sometimes forgotten. The Ankh of the Triarch, displayed upon the chest of their bodies, binds it to the Necron Empire and the Silent King, the last ruler of the Triarchs. Even though dynasties may clash, they will still unite behind the vision of ruling the galaxy. Um, yeah, that you see it on all their models. It's like that. It I looks like know. it's a coffin yeah, shape yeah. on their chest. And then there's the symbol, the ankh of the triarch, yeah, right there, yeah. And that's that's the last king, the silent king's symbol. Yeah. So it it, it didn't used to be though. Yeah, because originally be it was yeah the triarch was like the ruling three necron tur, and they were the the there was one silent king. There was always a silent king. Yeah. And then there were two pharons. Yeah. And that's where like the original position of pharon came from. Yeah. And he was called the silent king. Because he would never communicate to Necron, and the Pharons would communicate from the Silent King to hmm. the Necron. That's cool. Yeah, so yeah. The, the Pharons bear it as like it's like a reminisce of like the yeah. old days of we were like the Silent King's representations. So we'll always make sure we carry his marking. Yeah. yeah so even though uh, Necron dynasties might clash against each other, if the Silent King ever came back, they would all unite under him. Yeah. There's like even though undead, unfeeling, cold, calculating robot, they still adhere to like a very high standard of honor. Yeah. Well, like I, I even vi- envision like when a dynasty clashes with another dynasty, it's it's very much like a war game. Like neither side would really have losses. Yeah. Like they would lose territory and pride and that's yes. about it. But like yeah. soldiers, it doesn't matter. And, and anytime they would clash with each other, like the Praetorians are right there making sure... Like, or it could be like you see how long the conflict goes, and whoever like fails to like honor the codes the first time, like they lose the battle. Right? Yeah, it could so, be. Yeah, there's not there's not a lot of stuff out there talking about like how do dynasties clash? Like, what does it look like? So, yeah, because Games Workshop doesn't care about <laughs> as poor as he knows. anything other than Space Marines. <laughs> so I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! I'm in. <laughs> Each ruler of a dynasty will inevitably have their own dynasty colors and glyphs. Uh, those that swear allegiance to a dynasty will alter their composition of their living metal bodies to reflect uh, the oh, colors the colors of the crown, crown world. Uh, while their bodies have changed, the ankh remains, always reflecting the shape of the Silent King and the colors of the ruler of their tomb world. So every, uh, every lord, every tomb world will have its own color. And that onk on their chest will display that color. Yeah. And then. So even though the, it's still the shape of the onk, it, yeah. it might be blue and green yeah. or silver and red and yeah. whatever their l- personal lord is. Yeah. So when you like uh, gather an entire dynasty together, if that was even possible because they're so large, you would see everyone would be wearing all the same colors except for on that, their armor. Yeah. On their armor, except for that centerpiece. That would be a different color depending yeah. on which tomb world, depending on which. Which Lord, Lord or you Lord. followed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool. Um, I like that. I'd like to see that. That's a good way to... We were talking kind of about like doing squad markings. Yeah. And that'd be a good way to like differentiate squads. Give them all different markings on their onk. Yeah, yeah. colors there. So yeah. You, you, yeah, you paint all their armor the same, all their yeah. guns the same color and everything, but it's just literally that onk. That's yeah. slightly different. But it would be very cool. Yeah. yeah. The I'm another... Fluffy. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Another way to do it, though. Um, so we said that each dynasty has its own colors, which are uh, most likely the colors of its crown world. Yeah. But it also has a unique glyph uh, created and bestowed by the ruler of the dynasty, whether that's an overlord or a pharaon. Each level of authority has a lesser form of the dynasty glyph. And the level of completeness of the glyph is a direct relation to the amount of honor accorded by the ruler of the dynasty. 
So that's a that's a mouthful. Yeah. So if there is like a glyph, that yeah, and like typically when I think Necron, I think Egyptians. So then I think like hieroglyphics, but yeah. like their glyphs are very different. They're they're like it's a lot lines, of lines and, and circles, lines and circles, yeah. and the occasional squiggly line, but not necessarily shapes like you yeah. would out of a hieroglyph. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like there, like Imotech has a glyph, and I'm I'm not going to attempt to describe it, but. He has like a complete glyph, and this is like the glyph of him and like the uh, Sotek dynasty. Yeah, and then anyone under him will be allowed to sport on their body a slightly modified version of that glyph. Yeah, and then people under them have a slightly more modified version of that glyph yeah. until you get all the way, and this falls all the way down the ranks of authority until you get to warriors who have like a glyph that is almost not even recognizable from the first one because it's so much has been taken away and paired yeah, off because yeah. they're just they're not allowed the honor of wearing you the know full the glyph. full glyph yeah. i think like uh the the best way to picture what a glyph would look like is picture a stick man you know you got the circle you got a line you got two leg lines and two arms. sure lines. yeah and then just like, add other lines on the outside yeah add a circle on one of the legs or yeah whatever. exactly yeah. that that's pretty much how the glyphs look so then yeah, yeah that's, like that's as it one. goes down the ranks you know the, you lose the next, an arm exactly yeah exactly so one like you lose the head completely right yeah. so and that would also be another way to mark your squads is yeah. you make like each squad is accorded a different glyph yeah as long as all of the like all your warriors like their glyph is a very similar size because yeah. they're just warriors they're not allowed anything great yeah right but having said that sometimes you do get the occasional warrior who does something for their overlord that is particularly like badass i guess i don't know Make, honor yeah maybe yeah. the warrior somehow stepped in line it's a uh, line of fire it's way or something. less likely this would be a warrior and more yeah. likely like immortal or immortal odd. yeah most yeah. likely it, yeah, and I, we'll, we'll that will make sense later yeah when we talk about but that. yeah so there is the odd case where like a super low ranking person would have a full glyph but full seems high full seems high it could happen I, I would be like uh, okay but it could happen sure anything's possible oh yeah not when, in my when, dynasty. Wouldn't in the dynasty they just be like, though, like if some warrior did something, it's like, well, you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The, you did something heroic. Pride well, of course. They're like, <laughs> like the only reason you did it is because of your programming that yeah. we gave exactly. you. Exactly. I did that. So, yeah. I'm the one who did that. Necron are very conceited. <laughs> I get another glyph. Yeah, yeah. give yeah. me the glyph. Yeah. <laughs> Necron yeah. don't share. Exactly. Yeah. So who's giving accolades to the warriors? No Nobody. One. No one's giving accolades <laughs> to warriors. Yeah. Immortals and up. Nah, yeah. even the mortals. Immortals and up. I would say immortals and up. Immortals are capable of bravery and tactics. I would say scarabs and up. Scarabs. <laughs> scarabs. Yeah. I'm a benevolent ruler. No, what can course. I say? Even you're like a there's like a swarm of scarabs that follow you around and like they make your chair like when you sit down they just form into a chair <laughs> uh-huh. around you uh-huh. when you're thirsty they form into like a they form your glyph on a, oh they just God. they just <laughs> their bodies come together They're to make the glyphs <laughs> and they change their living metal to be shiny for the oh glyph God, i like it what one cool picture too that like you guys kind of just kind of said was like so just imagine like a dynasty changes sides and like instantly like all their colors automatically shift because mm. it's all just like programming oh, and they're like cool. living if metal. It, yeah so it's a like cryptic would be the one doing it right because yeah, yeah. you can't do it yourself but it it would be like that yeah, right? well yeah, like, like the silent king comes back and they just all morph into yeah, this like, like united army <laughs> yeah like it'd be ah! such a cool visual Except for the fact that Sai would be the, back, Yeah, except but. for the fact that he's now <laughs> c- pulling all the strings. But, uh, he's the puppet master. <sighs> no, he's not. He actually is. <laughs> uh, so Necron, uh, so that that's dynastic markings. Yeah. That's the, you, have, you have the color of your armor, you have the color of your ankh, and then you have a glyph. And yeah. those are three big distinctions that every Necron yeah, yeah. should have. Yeah, for sure. Um necron just in case you don't know <laughs> what they I don't. look like yeah they are humanoid standing eight feet tall not all the time not all the time no not if you blow off their legs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're standing straight up they're standing no even like a necron warrior is constantly in a hunched and hulking right thing yeah. and so like that's eight feet like if oh. they're standing up like they're even they're taller gonna be way them. taller than that like overlords and lords are like taller than if you were to measure the scale of models, the overlord is like taller. Which is always 100% accurate. Ab- absolutely, yeah. 
<laughs> the Overlord is like on par with a Primaris Marine, if yeah. not larger. Yeah. He doesn't no, look as bulky, but he's the same yeah. height. The scale is usually accurate within its own model line. Yeah. So like, and the and he's larger than a warrior. Yeah. And if a warrior is eight feet tall, yeah. this guy is going to be tall and yeah. imposing. Yeah. With their metal bodies, uh, can be seen the eldritch energies keeping them alive. So usually like glowing blues, greens, reds, yes. but it could be any color. Could depending. be any color. Uh, and accompanied by high pitched whines of servos as they kind of yeah, yeah. Cricket, even cricket. just like the energy that itself emits like a whine. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Jeez, do they ever get an oil change or anything? <laughs> Jeez, we <laughs> read a really <laughs> dumb line on Lexicon and oh yeah the other day. It was talking about like ooh, while their bodies are like uh, immortal, they look super banged up and they're dripping like fluids everywhere. And it's it's like, huh, so these guys, which are constantly in a self-repairing. And yeah, you ever heard of living metal, you dumb, dumb yeah, bitch, let's they're, can them? they're degrading? Like, <laughs> yeah. the only way that happens is if something is wrong with your program. Yeah. So it could happen to, like, a tomb world or a dynasty, but yeah. it's not the norm. <laughs> no. Any Necron in, like, decent condition is going to have proper programming. Yeah. So the warrior is the most recognizable and obviously the most numerous as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and they resemble the, like that skeleton body. Um, it is no more than a skeletal frame with large muscle groups displayed, such as quads. Yeah. So if you really look, you, you really see like a and skeleton. Glutes. In glutes. <laughs> yeah. And you see oh, like, no, they just have hips. No oh, glutes. They're so weird. Yeah. yeah. But you, so you can sweet, notice like sweet. quads and calf muscles yeah. and a little bit of forearm and bicep. Yeah. But really, they're very bare bones. Yeah. Very. As the rank improves, so does the attention to detail on their bodies. This uh, culminates in the bodies of those in the cult, uh, the court, overlords, lords, and others. Uh, these bodies are masterpieces of ornate and adorned with jewelry, insignia, and clothing to fit their rank. Yeah, clothing being metal. Yeah, yeah. Nothing they wear, like, isn't... Everything they have is built to last. Yeah. And last forever. So, like, what happens if, uh, like, if you're ranking up, isn't, but isn't your program kind of set in stone for you to be yes. a certain thing? Like you a lawyer? You don't really rank up. Yeah. 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 So, so how does that decide it then? So, it was all decided millions of years okay, ago. Yeah, everyone's rank is static. At the dawn of time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, there are Within some... Within the court, there's going to be some shifting. Yeah. Uh, really, like, they have what I call Lich Guard. Those would be, like, the, the only thing. And they're usually, like, bodyguards. We'll get into it a little later. But that would be, like, the lowest one. Like, even Immortals, they're not ranking up into Lich Guard, into Lords. Okay. But, no. like, there's... What's Varigard Oberon? Mm -hmm. He most likely was a Lich Guard, and now he's an Overlord. So there is kind of yeah some ranking up a little bit, but yeah, ninety nine ninety nine percent of everything is just a Necron Warrior, right. and it will <clears throat> stay static. Yeah. yeah, and then within the court, there is intrigue and political dramas yeah. and assassinations and overtaking. Yeah, because yeah. like the yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear about that <laughs> just because yeah. my conception of Necron is very much. Um, I don't know, Borg like, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Or Whereas, like Terminator, right? Yeah, like it's yeah. just you are you who you are. Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to get a story on that too. Like I don't Well, know I'm there's... working on it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're Xenos, they don't get any love. No. They throw out a cool idea and they don't touch it for another Are 10 they years. Xenos though? Or are they They're alien. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I guess, guess now they're, they're in Xenos. robots, but they're at Xenos. one point in time they're yeah. I, I I yeah. Anything other than human is Xenos. Even robots? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with you, Eric. An alien is anything I don't know that if isn't I from your own home world. Literally, that's an alien. An alien you can you can call someone from a different city an alien. Right, but that's like I don't call like a rock from a different <laughs> city an alien. We got those or alien world rocks. Yeah, but you'd call Mars an alien world. Sure, I guess so. And if someone was born, even if it was a human on born on Mars, you'd be like, that's an alien human. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Apparently Mexicans are aliens. Non-organic. <laughs> <laughs> Non-organic aliens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one last thing we're going to talk about Necrons, and that's what happens when they die. Sorry, can we go back to the, sure. the, the rank? Uh, just even the way they look, it's pretty cool when you look at their models. Um, like if you look at Overlords, you can see like extra glyphs on like their armor plates, like calf muscles or like you see just extra detail. Yeah, it's you way can, more refined. Yeah, yeah. Everything's smoother. Everything's a little more heavily armored too is a big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah and one thing I really like about their, their new aesthetic is that those like 
the metal capes that they have, like that. I don't even know like scale. They scale look like little capes. scarabs. Yeah, like yeah. they're not scarabs, but they look like tiny yeah. scarabs. Or like on their heads, they kind of have like these metal crowns. Like it's very cool, very ornate looking. Yeah, which is which totally fits the pride of yeah. the Necron build, yeah. right? Like that's like <laughs> everything about them is like shouting, like "Look at me, I'm better than you. Yeah. I deserve to rule over you." Right? Yeah. Okay, carry on. All right, so phasing out uh, and exploding. So Necron death. Um, like, so Necron are really resilient. When they're on the battlefield and they do take damage, normally what happens is subroutines take over, the nanobots or nanomachines are what, like, come alive in their body, and they attempt to repair any damage that has been done, just yeah. battlefield repairs. Yeah. Can even, like, knit arms back onto bodies. Like, the arms will just crawl back to bodies. <laughs> and, like, it's it's very much sci-fi Terminator-esque. Right yeah, now. yeah. Living metal. Yeah. Uh, when, though, when they take enough damage and the routines determine, like, I, we can't actually heal this in the middle of a battle for them to be worth it, they phase out. Yeah. So Necron are masters of the material universe, but they're also masters of other dimensions and not to be confused with the warp at all because yeah, this yeah. is not the warp. Oh, yeah. it's, We're throwing dimension. Yeah, other dimensions. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which is like oh, the boy. Necron are known for that. Like they play with pocket dimensions a lot. Okay. Yeah. So they step out of phase with reality, which is they step into another dimension yeah. and they are transported back to the tomb world. Whether that's through a stargate, a dolmen gate, um, a wormhole that they created and they're keeping contained in a in a monolith, who knows? But they will phase out of reality at some point, yeah, and they will disappear back to their yeah world, tomb world. To Assuming be. they can, yeah. Assuming that sometimes is the you can idea block situation. it. Yeah, yeah. It, well, ideal is they fix it on the battlefield, mm. right? They're, they're re- you know it's not enough damage that they can get back. Well, up and actually, keep ideal is they don't take any damage. Well, th- yeah. The only good Necron is an upright Necron. Okay. <laughs> an erect Necron? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Semi-erect. They're hunched. Uh-huh. I know. I only like dealing with... Anyways. <laughs> Semi-erect. <laughs> Necron. <laughs> yeah, but... So every now and again, you will damage one, like the actual system that opens up that kind of phasing out. Mm-hmm. And if that does happen, the Necron will explode. Yes. Its it, body will... It, like go up in a ball of flame to leave nothing for the people fighting it. Yeah. So it, it would be very rare to ever have like a Necron body ever because you'd have to destroy the phasing out ability and you'd somehow have to destroy the exploding ability. Yeah, with, while leaving part of the body <laughs> well, there. Yeah, while still leaving enough for you to, to be able study. to study. <laughs> yeah, super rare to find anything Necron. Yeah. Um, what happens though, and this is, uh, this is pretty old. I don't know if it's been changed at this point. I couldn't find anything saying that it has been changed. But um, even when a Necron explodes, so it couldn't phase out of reality, yeah, its consciousness is then transported back to the tomb world and waits to be given a new Necron body to inhabit yeah. and, and go. But every time that happens, apparently like a little bit of the consciousness is lost. So even though they're like just programs, they still have like a sense of being i don't know it is it's weird to describe them with any kind of will when they don't have any will yeah (laughs) but but whatever it is their programs are damaged they still have like super basic thought though yeah so but they're so any like your program is damaged in a very minute little way that maybe you don't even notice but by the time this has happened to you six hundred thousand times yeah. Right? At some point your program is Yeah. Is, Might not be able to do anything anymore. Yeah, and then it's time for the sleep sleep. <laughs> the sleep sleep. The sleepy sleep. The forever mm-hmm. sleep. Uh of course. Yeah. Well they <laughs> slept for sixty million years, so So that's the sleep sleep. Yeah. They're like, go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, so you can kill Necron. You can. It is possible. Yeah. Unlike what you told me when we started playing our first games, oh, all my guys don't die. Well, they don't. They, they just get fade out. They, they just they just phase out. out, and then they come right back. That's right. So even if you win, I win. That's I've learned right. one thing: and it's to never trust anything. Everything is a tomb world. Says. Everything is a tomb world. Uh-huh. Yes, that's another you're, lie he's been telling you. You're learning, James. <laughs> I'm learning through pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is possible to kill a Necron, but I truly think like the only truly. 
deeply. The only way I really see it happening is mm-hmm. killing the same Necron over and over and over enough and making been killing force, him for a long time. Forcing it <laughs> to transport just its consciousness back and then causing it to just fade out by that. Like, yeah. That's the only Which really is a lot way. of work. That would it's more, a lot of work. more than your lifetime. What are the chances that you fight the same Necron? You know the chances. It's seven. <laughs> it's, okay, yeah. It was seven. I just didn't know if he knew it. <laughs> I was going to say five, so. Uh, well, you I was wrong. It's <laughs> giving myself too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of that about them. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's get into some of their most commonly seen dynastic soldiers. Um, so to be a part of, like, the dynastic legions... Um, what that encompasses is to actually be a necronteur. So, like, any canoptic creature is not a part of the dynastic legions. Um, even though they will serve a dynasty and yeah. be attached to a dynasty, they're not actually a part of the legions. No, those are just, those, those are just tools. Yeah. Right? Like, exactly. they're, they're beasts. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, the dynastic leader, or uh, the dynastic legions kind of encompass really just lords, overlords, pharaons, which are your leaders. Then you got lich guard, immortals, and warriors. And that's pretty much dynastic legions they include tomb blades they do games workshop does but we can't trust anything they've ever yeah. told us but they are it is more of a vehicle wow yeah me and eric when planning the notes we we almost th- gone to a fist fight as per usual yeah over this but uh wait yeah. tomb blades is uh, re- refresh my memory those are the those bikes are. the you know they're they're Oh, they're like the, the, the circle the small things? spherical yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, okay. They would fit in like the palm of your hand. Yeah, they look like little balls. Yeah, exactly. This thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. th- there's also what they have are called war crypts, and war crypts encompass every type of Necron vehicle there is. Mm-hmm. So from, you know, in Mono my mind, life, yeah, Ghost Tomb Arcs, Arcs, Doomsday Arcs, yeah, yeah. But so uh, we like we left. <laughs> I left Tomb Blades in the notes, <laughs> and today I went in and I was going to add them. <laughs> so I started reading about Tomb Blades, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> that's a vehicle <laughs> that doesn't belong apparently they're just warriors that yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. yeah it's weird eh? yeah you think you'd you think you need something special but there's a reason why it's o- okay for a warrior to do it but we're not getting into tomb blades now but we should now that we've well, mentioned, obviously we, we should. can't just leave it we've done that too many times now we have to get into hashtag it. soon tm <laughs> right so let's get into the dynastic legions we're going to start off with uh the leaders um mm-hmm. so the very first one, the lowest rank. Yeah, is this called, is what you'd, you'd find the most of. Yeah. These are the my lords. lords. My lords. My lords. Excuse me, my lord. Lord. My lord. Yes, my lord. Job's That's done. That's how they're addressed. <laughs> Canon official. Job's done. <laughs> Governor. That's the rank above. <laughs> <laughs> lords. These Necron rule over a single tomb world, normally serving under an overlord. They're responsible for the safety of the Necron forces upon the planet. They must muster they muster their armies to march for their overlord, and their forces will bear their colors upon their unk on their chest. Yeah. So if your lord colors are blue and purple, but the dynasty colors are green and red, the armor will be green and red. But if you're a Necron on this purple guy's tomb world, that's the color of your Ankh. Yeah. Yeah. So would you probably wouldn't run into more than one. It would, it, would it be weird to have more than one lord in the same place then? Or would they just be on like some sort of campaign? Like if they could be, it, it, like what does the Farron order? What does the overlord order them to do, right? They're, okay. It, like yeah. if. But there's only one per tomb world? Yes. Yeah. There could be more than one lord on a tomb world, but there's only one lord of a tomb world. Yeah, sure. And, okay. And typically, so lords are in charge of like, they're called fringe worlds, I think. It's yeah. Well, anything. They could be anything. Yeah. But like typically you're never going to find out, you're never going to find an overlord in charge of a fringe yeah. world. Yeah, you sure. have like a crown world which is where your pharaoh sits and you have yeah. core worlds which are kind of like your next kind of step which are usually going to be overlords. There could be a lord in there for sure. And then yeah, you'd have kind of like your fringe outposts and lords will be in charge of that. Okay. Yeah. But it, it'd be on, like it it'd be super the, rare. It'd be like yeah. seeing It depends on the breakup of like if if there's a star system on the fringe of your dynasty, like maybe you give that star system to an overlord. Yeah. So he controls the most, the best planet in that star system. And then all the other planets are controlled by his lord. Sure. But right? like for, there's a maximum of one, like there's never more than one 
uh, lord per not a ruler, world ruler, but you can inhabit. There could be fifty lords on a single planet. Oh, uh, okay. So There's lords are, saying there couldn't be, but okay, only sure. one ruler. I see. I see. Okay, yeah. that was my question because I'd be like, because yeah, the lord, if you're attacking a, a planet. And there's like sixty lords in your army. Yeah. You're like, well, there's nothing wrong with a lord having his own court, right? Like a, a court of lords, yeah. a lord among well, just lords. Like the overlord probably holds his own court, right? And that's where all his lords come to swear to him and bring their problems to him, yeah. right? And okay. then the pharaoh right. will have his court, right, where the, sure. all the overlords will congregate. Sure, that that was my question. Is like, yeah. could you? Is it weird that you run into so many lords? The answer is no. Depends on the dynasty. Okay. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. How do you how do you write your dynasty? Right, like is it? Full I write my dynasty. They all just walk in circles because they can't get off the planet because their their programming's broken. Damn it! <laughs> so they're all just walking in Perfect. circles. Perfect. And so they've walked so long that they're actually just in donut holes throughout the planet. Uh, just they walking. Sawed in the planet in half <laughs> by just walking in a circle around the planet. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're almost at the core of the planet now. <laughs> this is this is how Necron harvest the cores. <laughs> yeah. They just set up. They just walk they, for a hundred million they years. They get all the Necron that are insane, and they like just go march on this planet, uh-huh. and they come back in fifty years. Uh-huh. Fifty years? You think that's how long it would take? Yeah. Walking on the same spot. For We've 50 done years. the math, James. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You I'm don't sorry. Trust I us? questioned you. <laughs> Is this another mantis shrimp scenario? <laughs> oh god, that's gonna haunt me forever. <laughs> so lords serve in the court of their dynasty, using their vast intellect to gain favor. When they go to war, they will inevitably wield their most precious of weapons, though they would have access to effectively anything that their yeah. their tomb world is capable of producing. Yeah. And that their overlord allows them to use. Yeah. Right? So they are in charge of armies, mm-hmm. but you could potentially see like a lord not have an army as well. Like maybe the lord is ruling a planet that is just <laughs> there's nothing on that planet. Yeah, it's just. Him. I would see him it leaving just, that planet unless he was like ordered to stay. Like well, yeah, if like, he woke up and he's like, "Shit!" Like this is my tomb world, and literally every single person is gone. I would see him leave. Probably, yeah. but like I, I, I see it more like uh, an overlord gave this lord uh, this planet to a lord is like he screwed up insult. yeah exactly yeah. exactly almost like a slight yeah. like uh you failed me now this is your new planet it's like you don't control your legions anymore like until you prove your worth again but you're never going to prove your <coughs> worth because you don't have any legions to yeah. do it so he just built sprucrons then <laughs> yes brings them to fight <laughs> so typically lords will have a huge legion of yeah They'll have what's, millions. what's ever was on their tomb world, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's not like there's seven, how many billion people on our planet? Seven? Seven billion yeah. people? There's, he is a single lord, has an army of seven billion Necron. That's yeah. what it would be if all of us became Necron. Yeah, exactly. Like that, Necron babies. That's kind of crazy Necron to think people. how big they are. Yeah, how big it could potentially be, for sure. Yeah, that's an entire planet capable of crushing every single space marine out there. Uh, no. Uh, plot armor. Do you want to do you want to play a game against my iron hands? No. <laughs> oh, oh God! <laughs> oh, we'll play that out <laughs> and see what happens. Not <laughs> even remotely do I want to do that. Uh, so up next on the hierarchy, we have overlords. Mm. Uh, overlords rule over many tomb worlds. And overlords, they- almost yes. you would say. <laughs> well, will you let me get to the next <laughs> part of the sentence, James? Please. <laughs> Often placing lords to rule over the individual planets themselves. Yeah, so you could say they are overlords <laughs> themselves. Because of this, an overlord <laughs> you is. You could say that. Cool. And you should. I did three times now. <laughs> I could say it again if you like. I would say it thrice. <laughs> Because of this, an overlord is capable of commanding untold legions of Necron pulled from many different lords and their tomb worlds. Yeah. Like if every... he has his own tomb, tomb world. Yeah. And, you know, he's... Maybe he's controlling a star system. That's just... That's my favorite example is... Yeah. Maybe he's controlling a star system and there's eight planets in the star system and they all had 10 billion people on the planet. Oof. And this man controls 80 billion... Or this overlord controls 80 billion, like, Necron soldiers. Like, that's... That's just a single overlord. That's a Exterminatus. Lot. You can't. <laughs> they just come back. <laughs> Not if you put... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My blank si- pr- uh, solution isn't going to work here. Warp. The warp. The warp. Yeah, that'd be one way. Well, 
they have lords beneath them. They will still most likely rule over a planet themselves with their own legions marked by the overlord's personal color upon their onk. Yeah. So even though they're also part of a dynasty and they could swear fealty to another overlord or to a pharaoh, they will always have their own personal color upon their own. Yeah, and all their legions will, will carry the dynasty color yeah. on their all armor. Their, their personal legion, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. lords then will have theirs that have yeah. their own color. It, it's a really cool way, I think, like mar- making your onks. Like, I'm, yeah. I might do that with mine. But <laughs> I also like to think that they're all from my crown world. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thought to picture you painting models. Yeah, it's just, yeah. isn't it? I was talk. building today, all right? Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off there, bud. Yeah. What were you, what right were you building? <laughs> what were you building? Grey Knights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, demons for my Grey Knights. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was going to ever get primed. Yeah. Actually, Someday. that one's ready to go. The Ancient. Nice. Yeah. Now got to base him. Now he's got the demonette on. Mm. Spicy. Yeah. It's Real good. Nice. It's good stuff. Real nice. Uh, the highest rank that we see that we have to contend with on in the uh, Necron are the Phaerons. Yes. This is the <laughs> highest rank achievable by any mm-hmm. Necron. A Phaeron rules over many tomb worlds with a large court of overlords and lords to serve them. Yeah. The only authority they recognize is that of the Silent Kings and his presence, the Praetorians. While they do not concern themselves with the minutia of the dynasty, they ensure that the codes of the Necron are followed. Oh, I should have rewrote that better. While the Praetorians do not concern themselves. Like, yeah, so he they only recognize the authority. I read it with a comma, so it was yeah, fine. I, I know. <laughs> like, the only authority above a Pharaon is the Silent King itself. Yeah. And that's a throwback to the days of the Triarch yeah. when the Pharaons sat beside the Silent King, you know, and wore his voice. That's... Yeah. It's kind of like a, it's cool to see how it's like changed through the millennia. Like it used to be there were only two pharaohs, but yeah. now it's just, if you're powerful enough, you become a pharaoh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the interesting thing. Like uh, to become a, par- a pharaoh, you have to reach a certain level of power. They, they constantly throw around like the term, a sector, an overlord has to control a sector yeah. in order to become a pharaoh. But like, who knows what that really means? And like every sector is going to be different scale, yeah. different planets on it. Like the the biggest, I think the only this is the only one we really know. So it's the Sotek dynasty, which yeah. is the largest one, and Imotek the Pharaon controls eighty tomb worlds, hmm. which doesn't seem like a lot in my opinion. Hmm. Like, especially when you see his galactic map. Yeah, eighty tomb worlds. Hmm. It's almost as if not every planet is a tomb, tomb world. world. Holy fuck. We're on to you, bud. No, nah, they on. just haven't woken up yet, guys. Relax. <laughs> Trust me, we're all waking up. <laughs> so, not every dynasty, though, is run by a pharaoh. No. Uh, I would say most aren't. Most are, yeah, typically going to yeah. be run by an overlord. And or even a, a lord. Potentially even a lord. Yeah. Um, it yeah. Dep- it's like, yeah. if the lord hasn't sworn fealty to anyone, anyone, yeah, and he just has his, his own, single... Yeah, he's his own ruler. Yeah, he yeah. is the dynasty ruler. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, to, in order to become a pharaoh, you have to be like super powerful. Yeah. Um, it's a level of authority that, that when, you carry. When we're reading through like uh, just random titles and names for people, like they'll have the title of overlord and then they'll also have like regent or they'll have these different titles. Yeah. So let's say you have a dynasty and you have multiple overlords in this dynasty. One of them will be in charge of the dynasty, but he might just get like overlord and then a title. Yeah. Um, to differentiate that he's like yeah. the mm. leader because you still will have a leader not every leader or not every dynasty is led by a pharaoh and the the interesting thing to note is that all these people like lords overlords and pharaohs like games workshop models them differently and they give them different rules but they are the same being yeah right like they're all given the same bodies back in the day of biotransference yeah and like Imotech was a lord at one point. Yeah. Like he, like when he woke up, he actually stole the Sotek dynasty from the old Pharaon. Yeah. Right. So it like, don't, th- and this is where the whole political intrigue comes in, Jordan, because you can't just think of an overlord as like a, 
a being. It's nothing more than a title. Yeah. A lord can be an overlord. An overlord can get cast down and become a lord. Yeah. You could be a pharaoh one day and a lord the next, and, like, nothing is changing, right? Yeah. Like, in terms of your body. Yeah, yeah. When you look at them, you might think that they're actually different but the reality is it's they, all the same they just yeah. change their living metal to make yeah exactly like well, you have as a pharaoh you have more resources you can attract better cryptics to your court who will manipulate your living metal better right so. yeah that's a the uh, my question was going to be before you brought that up like man they kind of painted themselves into a corner with how many models they can have for hqs for uh, Necron, but if there's like different levels, like you could yeah. have be the regent one, maybe they could do something yeah, different there, with that. There's like another rank called the Nemesaur, which is particularly like a military advisor. Yeah. Um, so, and like Nemesaurs it. are like overlords, just yeah. given that title. And you could have sure. overlord regent or yeah. lord yeah, regent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. like, yeah. It sound like what because there's only what three of those. Three. Yeah. yeah, that's not a lot. There's yeah. only yeah. There's technically only three levels of HQs that can be taken on the tabletop. It's just there's just variants like a catacomb command barge. It's another HQ, but really, really? it's just an overlord inside of that. Yeah, yeah. But th- and that's what I mean. It's just it seems odd with You're a just lot of used other to things. Primaris Marines where it's like here's a hero. Yeah, we're doing a Tau release. Here's a Space Marine hero. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your 40th lieutenant <laughs> you know release what? this year. I'm going to drown in your tears while I <laughs> with my models. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so I'll swim through my models and your tears and I'll just, <laughs> I'll be happy. But my point is I find it strange that they do that because yeah. that doesn't give them a lot of well, options this, to make This hasn't models. changed since like fifth. Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. think it was just lords in third. Yeah, there was no overlords. Yeah, and yeah. it was only at fifth edition that the rank of Pharaon and overlords were created. Yeah, so and like it just, fourth and edition. Is there a Pharaon one. model? There was no fourth edition. Uh, like, in, oh. not for Necron. Oh, I guess third edition. Yeah, yeah third. Sorry. Uh, Imotech is a Pharaon. Okay. And that's the only Pharaon that's playable. Okay. Everyone else is either an overlord or a lord. Or a I guess that just shows how much more rare they are, how much you actually have to control. Yeah. Sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with like you playing as like uh, your own dynasty and using like the overlord rules and claiming that you are the pharaoh of your dynasty, <laughs> right? Yeah, so yeah. You could even be using the lord rules if you want and just yeah. claim that you're the pharaoh. Yeah. So, sure. Yeah. Hmm. Just as not a tough not as tough of a pharaoh right yeah, you just yeah. have less than 80 worlds maybe exactly. you only have 20 worlds yeah. but you can only attract like third rate cryptics yeah. to help you manipulate mm. your armies and stuff so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where, i was just thinking like if there's anything i could think of to add another hq choice but like cryptics are hq choices right yeah 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 it, it's just i like I know what e- you're saying, all other yeah. armies like even like even like Tau have a lot more options for yeah. ways they could make it, or yeah. or Eldar have like yeah. a billion different ways you can I make it. I just find I don't that interesting. Feel like boxed in at all when I'm doing that. If if anything, you're playing Necron. You're well, playing like these the most uniform thing. Yeah, That's like I, I don't sure. mind that. What <laughs> if I was to pick a bone though with their HQ options? It's that every single named HQ is either part of the Sotek dynasty mm. or they're not part of any dynasty. Yeah. So Anrakir and Trazin are two Necron HQs that aren't part of any dynasty. So if you want to be Nefrit or Mefrit, sorry, you yeah. can't pick those heroes. Or you can, but they don't get any bonuses from it. So it's just annoying that like, sure. if you want to play a Motek or you want to play Illuminor Zaris or whatever, like yeah. you have to be Sotek. Whereas like every... like the. Like the Tau have different named heroes for different sets, right? I suffer the same fate because I'm a Xenos player. Like 90% of the Tau characters are from the Tau sept. But are there some in other sets? Because Necron um, doesn't even have that. There's lots for Shadow Farsight. Sun now. Farsight, yeah, technically. Shadow Te- Sun technically. now can be. <laughs> well, it's not really a sept, it's its own fucking codex. Yeah. It's eight. not its own codex. It's oh, in it, the Tau codex. Is it in the Tau codex? The codex? It doesn't have a. I thought the 8 a, is in its own. It's not in its own codex. It's like a supplement. I, I think there there was a, a white dwarf mm. that had Because I know it, in it. almost every other edition, he's had his own like codex. Oh, codex. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Farsight Enclaves? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, maybe Tau is a bad example. Any Xenos is going to yeah. be a bad example. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure, sure. 
I mean, it's maybe a piss I just, off. I, it's compa- a piss off. I just compare myself to Space Marines, I guess, yeah. which is just a, a bad thing to do. <laughs> Anyways, well, the guard, the guard have have like different guard regiments have different named HQs. Yeah, yeah, oh, they definitely more do. Imperium though. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, but that's half the game, so. <laughs> Not yeah. if I can help it. I'll buy as many Xenos armies as I can. <laughs> I don't even like them, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta signal to that market. Though. I know. I got us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Games are, Workshop will see you, Mark. the you just start to sacrificing goats I to the GDW demand GW in marketing in Xenos team. Army, so. <laughs> There's a lot of Xenos armies being bought in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so up next we have Lichgard. Yeah, so those were the leaders of the dynasties, and now we have the actual beings that form the legions themselves. Yeah. So Lichgard are originally taken from noble bloodlines within the Necrunter, and these warriors will protect their charge with unquestionable loyalty. Uh, Previously, when they were Necrunter, this had been a point of pride for them, but when they were all biotransferred through the manipulation of their programming, this whole loyalty thing is now just a fact because it's an inescapable truth of their existence that they cannot break their programming to be loyal. Yeah. Sure, but isn't that all Necron? Right, but it used to be like this is it's there's an irony in the Lich Guard because it used to be where the Lich Guard like it was a point of pride that they were loyal to their master and, and then they lost their flesh and they lost the ability to have it as a point of pride. And now it's a slavery. Yeah. And also, so Necron programming can be corrupted and influenced. Yeah. So, like, you could potentially, like, have one overlord corrupt another lord's warriors and make the warriors turn. Mm, but okay. where, the, with the Lich Guard, I don't even think that's a possibility. You cannot bypass that at all. It's yeah, so built in. Yeah, it's like some form um, of, like, uh, Rubik's Cube yeah. technology Yeah, because the, the other thing, too, with, like, warriors and immortals... <laughs> <laughs> Those are unsolvable. You can't solve them. The, the three by three is impossible. <laughs> impossible. <laughs> um, so... So warriors and immortals are tied to a tomb world. So when lords and stuff change their loyalties, different lords will be put in charge of different tomb worlds. Those warriors on the tomb worlds are still loyal to that tomb world. They're not then following their lord. Where lich guards would would follow their lord to new assignments. Yeah. Um. So it 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 just is a step beyond yeah. just the the loyalty level. Um, the other interesting thing is too, like they are tied to like noble bloodlines. So I wonder, like back in Necron Turd days, like were these guys cousins of the nobles? Like, yeah, the were, bastards. Were could, they the, could bastards? Be the bastards? Those with no actual, like there was no way they would actually make it as like heirs to a house. Yeah. So you know, like you would offer them up as so like officers and like sold in the army or whatever. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you know, we first, don't know. The first son is an heir. An the second son is a soldier. What's the third son? A step. philosopher. Is he? Isn't like the, isn't like the fourth son is a priest or something? And the seventh son is a dragon slayer. <laughs> the seventh son of a seventh son. What, what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> it's the chosen one. Yeah. <laughs> You've never heard the seventh son of a seventh son? Oh, that's it's like they a... They call him Dovahkiin. <laughs> Dragonborn. It's like a well-known trope for fantasy. All right. You say I'll so. take your word for it, yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> fine fine due to their closeness to the ruling members of the necron her houses they were allowed to keep a portion of their individuality during the biotransference this has been a boon in their ability to spot and tackle threats to their masters because they're actually able to think and process yeah overcome problems yeah 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 and like each one brings his own individuality like it says with them so yeah. some might actually be some are really have, good at, at like looking for this threat. Yeah, yeah. Some are really good at overcoming this kind of threat. Yeah. Which makes sense how they could be involved in intrigue then. Yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely. eventually move up the ranks. Yeah. So but how, how would that work with their loyalty if they did manage to somehow move up in the world? How can they be like, I'm, lo- so, I'm so loyal to myself? I, I have no idea. They're, well, they don't, the way, the they way don't I would say. see it, right? So you'd have a lord who would promote a lich guard to become a lord but then the lord who promoted him would then become an overlord so then the lord would then be permanently 
under the overlord so you'd have a guy that's like not ever going to betray that overlord because if you're an overlord is a necron who has a lord underneath him so, so yes. he just wants to promote all of his lich guard to his i don't think absolutely i don't think lich guards can actually join the upper echelons of the court i would say it's one of those like 99.99999 type situations i don't think it's ever been written down that they can't but it definitely is not a common thing for sure but we do have that example most likely of likely of varagon Ober- oberon varagard 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 yeah. so Var-ar-ar. i think it does happen but it it's at such a small percentage that it's never really going to happen because it's a var the Vargard though he's not a lord he's an overlord isn't he Vargard Oberon yeah no he's the Nemesor van like he's Nemesor's bodyguard personal bodyguard he's been given the title of Vargard but truthfully he's Baga. he's just the Nemesor's bodyguard that doesn't <laughs> sound very like Egyptian that title yeah. oh no my computer just beeped at me updates yeah. <laughs> virus protection uh huh which kind do you have? I don't know. The <laughs> the one? That one type? The one. Of, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Can Necrons get viruses? Absolutely. Sweet. Uh, so still talking about Lich Guard. Within the court itself, this level of anonymity has allowed them to take the role of emissaries or even commanding armies when the Lord or Overlord cannot themselves. So if the Lord needs to step away for a heartbeat, uh, he will name a specific... Uh, Lichgard, his war master, to continue the efforts of the crusade. He'll go back onto his tomb world to work on the webway portal. <laughs> oh, God! Uh, Lichgard will betray him, and they'll uh, we'll enter into a uh, new age of uh, enlightenment and prosperity. So this is more like... The Lich uh, heresy. <laughs> the Lich heresy. <laughs> this is more like what Varagon Oberon is. He's more of like that role by the sounds, but from what, I'm re- from what I just read. He's not a lord, but he has no. been given... He's been given a lot of autonomy. A lot of autonomy yeah. to like lead the armies of Nemesis. Yeah, but Andrek. in the end, he is just a okay. Vargar. Okay, I, I yeah, misunderstood yeah. that because I yeah I, I knew he was leading armies, so I take back everything I said about mm-hmm. him. So maybe maybe uh maybe there isn't any chance of a a Lich Guard ever becoming a lord. Yeah, I, I just think it's a harken back to like the the Necron Tur time where like these they didn't yep. have a chance of being heirs anyway, so they were just bloodlines. They were just extra nobles in the bloodlines. So. It's just a. Re- it's moved forward to. But today. what if the whole bloodline died out? Well, there's no bloodlines anymore. Yeah. Right. Sure. So they don't sure, keep them, sure. keep track of them anymore. There's yeah. no need to. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Now, uh, depending on the availability and preference of their patron, they are most often equipped with either large war scythes or sleek hyperphase swords and massive dispersion shields. While this is true for every lich guard ever encountered. Nothing states that they could not wield any weapon at the order of their charge. Yeah. I just have a picture of, like, Lich Guard carrying, like, heavy gauze. No, not gauze blasters. Yeah. Yeah, gauze blasters. Not heavy ones, but gauze blasters. Yeah. Like, the Lord just likes range combat. Or he likes to stand back or something. Yeah. There's nothing. There's, like, like, Lich Guard are different. Yeah. They, they have individuality, so it's not like they wouldn't be able to learn how to use a new weapon or have even their own preferred weapon, potentially. Yeah, of course. So... But yeah, but you always see them with the scythe yeah. or the sword and shield. For Thanks, sure. tabletop. Yeah, that's definitely one of those. <laughs> uh, immortals are up next. So, born from the warriors of the Necronter, being given a metal body has only allowed immortals to wage war on a higher plane. While their lesser warriors will inevitably fall back on defensive protocols, immortals will strive for victory. Always strive for it, using. Uh, all their skill and tactical knowledge. Yeah, it's interesting to note that they are like slightly above the automaton of yeah. the warrior. Yeah, and yeah. Like this, apparently, like the being given this metal body has only allowed them to embrace what they were before as warriors. Yeah, but that's all they embrace because they don't retain any of their personality and have no opportunity to learn or grow. Um, they are permitted to keep their knowledge of warfare. So, yeah. And while they remain unable to adapt to new modes of warfare, war has remained the same across the eons, and it is seldom that an immortal is caught off guard or surprised. Yeah, I love that idea so much. Like, they can't really learn anything new. Yeah. But, like, war what does constant, it matter yeah. when 
Like, you've just been fighting war forever. Like, war doesn't change. It's kill or be killed. Yeah. I, I, just, I like that idea, the thought that, you know, war, the theater never changes. and Yeah. Only the faces across from That's you. That's right. Only the faces of the crowd screaming for blood. <laughs> oh, okay. Or in this case, <laughs> fluids. <laughs> Cut his Necron head off. Uh-huh. The immortal self-repair systems, while not as advanced as the lords of the court, is still better than the rank-and-file warriors, allowing them to present a more persistent threat on the battlefield. Yeah, few races have the courage to stare down an incoming wall of immortals. Their Gauss blasters methodically destroying enemy cover or their Tesla carbines arcing between targets, channeling large amounts of destructive power. Mm -hmm. The... the, the, uh Necron weapons are just so ridiculous. I love how they're ridiculously powerful. Yeah, yeah. I love how big they are too. Like the the gauze blaster. It's just yeah. It's like literally. It's the bigger than. It's like the size of his body. It would be it's like his a, legs. It's, it's like yeah. a heavy boulder. It'd be an eight foot tall thing. gun, like two feet thick. Yeah, like they're, they're wild. It's yeah. so crazy. Not so great in the game, but they're decent. Not so great in the game, but. Uh, but they're cool. I'm an expert at cheating in that game, and they're decent. <laughs> okay. Well, when Mark fires them, they have strength six minus three AP, range three flat two, yeah. <laughs> range seventy two, <laughs> assault ten. Yes, each weapon naturally. Ooh. Ooh, they're pretty good now. You're changing your tune all of a sudden. <laughs> I mean, like you know what? minus five AP. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You see, if you play, that sounds like. But what? only if you moved, or didn't move. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a fair limitation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, you paid every, the points for it, so. Like, yeah, I paid the points <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I paid the points for it. Yeah, I, I can give any rule to anything yeah, as long as I pay the I'm points. Gonna, I'm going to give any weaponry to any person I want. I paid the points for it. Pay the points. <laughs> I don't like being the butt of your jokes. <laughs> uh, but, but those are immortals, so yeah. they're... Yeah. They were once the warriors of the Necron Tour, and now they pretty much they love the what they do. Yeah. Ironically, the warriors are not the warriors no, of the Necron Tour. They are not. Interesting. Ironic. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to educate us on the warriors? No, that's okay. Oh, I like okay. hearing your voice, Eric. <laughs> Just I, Eric. Nice. Well, like, <laughs> thanks. I well, play, I'll I tell play, you. I'll play your voice <laughs> when I go to bed every night. I just put my headphones in and listen to you talk to me. <laughs> It lulls me to sleep. I don't like that. That's got to give you nightmares. No, that's <laughs> sweet dreams. Skipping through oh. meadows. <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> don't want to dwell on that. No, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> You're married. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> Once she asks, what are your hopes and dreams? You never tell about the dreams of Eric, eh? <laughs> Well, I never tell her about no. my hopes and dreams about Eric. No. I don't even tell Eric about my hopes and dreams about Eric. <laughs> I'm worried he would run like a butterfly. <laughs> run like a butterfly. Fly, I don't know. It's okay. We're moving on to Warriors. <laughs> Butterflies don't run. <laughs> You've never seen the running butterfly of Calgary, haven't you? I have not oh, seen man. that. One time I convinced a guy. <laughs> <laughs> that black squirrels were u- right. uniquely a Calgarian thing <laughs> they don't exist anywhere else <laughs> was that someone Eric <laughs> yes <laughs> he did really? and then, how old were you <laughs> it was like five years ago what? I was in my 20s <laughs> And then, and then, like uh, the, the next summer or something, I was like in Vancouver, and I was oh in, my like, god, this, a black squirrel! I in park, <laughs> and I saw a black squirrel. He must so have come I, all the way I from Calgary. Mark they spread. They I spread. Sent Mark a picture, and I was like, "Oh my god, there's a black squirrel here!" <laughs> what <laughs> are the chances? Eh? And people wonder why I go to Google all the time. <laughs> he, he was abused as a child <laughs> by me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Warriors, <laughs> background warriors. Uh, yes, oh. yes. So, created from the general population of the Necron Tur, they were sacrificed to become mindless drones for those who would rule the new Necron Empire. They were placed within the least advanced of the living metal bodies, although they're still very, very advanced. Yes. Barely resembling the shape they had in their previous life. 
They had been stripped of their memories, and all autonomy has been removed from them. They are nothing more than machines forced to serve for eternity. Yeah. It's still odd to think that, like, you you hear this, and it sounds like it could just be a program, and yet these warriors still require, like, the original consciousness to animate it. Yeah. Right? So there's there's a level of disconnect that I haven't been able to fully rationalize between myself, <coughs> like, what what is actually in the Necron warrior body versus what's in the Canoptic Constructs bodies, right? Sure. Like how does one function and the other one requires like an actual being to inhabit it? So I'm like, I'm not entirely certain I've, I'm ever satisfied when I think about this, but. Well, let's get down to the meat of the matter. What is a soul in the first place? Well, they place? have no souls. They were eaten, <laughs> consumed. Oh, is that Whatever it is, though? the Necron do not have it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every single Necron soul has been consumed. Even the high-ranking ones? Yeah. They didn't get Even away. the Silent King? Mm. Yeah. yeah. His soul is gone. Oh. Yeah, but the word soul in 40K it it means is many very, weird it's very things. confusing. That's yes. what I'm saying. What is a soul? The soul in... Mm. Our modern vernacular is very confusing too. Yeah. Well, I, the, I, <laughs> it is sure, yeah. but like in in 40k, <laughs> it's like this immortal thing. Sometimes, sometimes it's an energy. Sometimes it's it's very confusing sometimes as to what they can, define it. Uh, touch another person's soul, and, and other times you can manipulate your own soul. And I like to sometimes think it's that, a part of you, and sometimes like I like to think that you touch my soul yeah. often. <laughs> So <laughs> interesting. Normally, I'm the one doing the touching, James. Leave me alone. You are doing the touching. We got a new resident creep here, James. <laughs> yeah, but the their souls are gone. But also, every single thing that made them an individual is gone. Yeah, their memories, everything. Yeah, because of their limited mental capacity, they require constant instruction, or else revert to the predetermined set of routines. And while their emotions were purged during the biotransference, the instinct of self-preservation was retained. Which is interesting to note that they allowed them to keep this, but they oh, got well rid you of everything else. Don't want your soldiers to die needlessly. Because like, even though Necron, it takes a lot to actually kill them. Every time you destroy them, they kind of do lose a bit of themselves or whatever. Yeah, but immortals, like, they... So it's, it's read that... While warriors will fall back yes. due to this instinct of self-preservation, yeah. immortals will push on yeah. beyond. So immortals who are inevitably better, sure. why would they like why is it important to keep warriors preserved but not immortals, right? See what you're when saying. there's also way more warriors. Me. I just don't know, right? Yeah. Like I, it's an interesting thing that has been written that they have this instinct of self-preservation. Hmm. Yeah. Even though they're only Necron incapable, or even though they're the only Necron incapable of speech, they will emit a high-pitched scream during their death throes. Yeah. So eee. every single, like, <laughs> every Necron can talk except warriors, but immortals can, on, can only say very basic Basic, basic things. The, yeah, and the yeah. only reason Forward, they have to talk shoot. is to give orders to warriors, apparently, yeah. and to relay something that they saw to, like, a lich guard or someone higher up than them. Yeah. They need to speak to communicate? That seems odd. Yeah. They're so advanced, but they still need I'm assuming words. they have both. I'm assuming it's a point of pride for them because they also like living in the past. And in the past, you know, they held court and they passed orders and they waged war. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah. Like, I'm assuming they can. I just think for them, like, Necron do a lot of things that are unnecessary, but they do because they're living in the past. Sure. Right? Do you guys know if uh, anyone's ever captured a Necron? Yeah, it has to have happened. I, I seem to recall, like, a picture of, like, a dissection table. <laughs> of a Necron? Yeah. That would have been one of those old school third edition drawings, right? Yeah. Like you think you think Black just white in terms of like story you'd think uh someone would would want to get like their technology or something like that. Yeah. Like it's incredibly tough because of the phase out and the destruction yeah, yeah. But the explosions. Yeah. But do they only phase out over the last 10,000 years? Like can they phase but so Necron Can they phase out at will? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and yeah. The other thing about Necron is they're They've only been in the galaxy, like, when was their first? 500 like, years. Yeah, it's not like, very long. Oh, well, I guess it's M42 now. Yeah. I, I think they made an Imperius, 
like one of them made an appearance on like M36, but it was like this small offshoot world, Sanctuary 101 or something like that. And then they weren't seen again until like M40. So they have like they're just sleeping though. You mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So 2000 years then. Okay. In 783 M41, <coughs> Eldrad of Craftworld Uthwe had a vision where like the Necrons were st- going to start rising soon. So they hadn't even risen. In 783 M41. Yeah. Like, that's really late. Sure. Like, I think okay. the Tau make appearances Yeah, so the that. very first contact with the Necron was uh, 897. Yeah. Like, that's, that's so, like the okay, end of the sure. 41st millennium, yeah, sure. right? Yeah. So, um, if the Necron... Sanctuary. If all the Necron dynasties are awoken, is that, like, the end for the galaxy? That's game over. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not. That's game over. Who could beat them? Tyranids, orcs, Imperium. Yeah, orcs beat them once. Yeah, Eldar, orcs. Okay, <laughs> everyone. Okay. That, orcs, that's one of those things. Orcs where and like, Eldar uh, beat them once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things where it's like orc players. Like, oh, if we all unite, all the orcs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Count, it's one of those, a, but there's no chance of that. So there's no. And there's also no chance of the Imperium uniting. They could. They weren't even doing it during the Great oh, Crusade. Yeah, just wait till we get another Primarch. Boom, done. No, now there's two Primarchs butting Perfect. heads against each other. No, they love each other. They're brothers. Are they? Are they? <laughs> brothers never fight. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if there was ever a race to be fully united other than the Tau, because the Tau is a fully united yeah. race, it would be the Necron under the Silent King. Yeah, but yeah. he's never come back. I yeah. hope not. And, and that's he the other thing. Like, Necron bad. are just as, like, war-hungry against it's each other as, like, orcs are. Okay. Like, they're just as much, like, maybe not just as yeah. much. So, like... Other races, the thing that keeps them from... Yeah, uh, it's a common enemy. Uh, yeah, well, the thing that keeps them from, like, taking over the galaxy is their own internal conflicts. Yeah. More mm-hmm. or less. Sorry, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Except yeah. for the Tau, because they aren't important but they're, enough they're to they're do like anything so anyway. they're, like, so small in scale compared to everything else. There's yeah, no, no way No one cares about those little fish boys. <laughs> <laughs> and girls. Do you want to make another apology, James? Because yeah. <laughs> we'll write you one. Nah, man, I'm I'm feeling nah, I'm man. feeling dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's like your dynastic legions. Those are the different kinds of Necron you'd expect to find in a battle. Other than anyone who's th- okay, those are the specific Necrons who have sworn allegiance to a dynasty. Uh, yeah. So we specifically left out, uh, what do we leave out? Flayed Ones, Destroyers. Knop, or, uh, death Marks. Uh, no, what are they? Cryptics. Yeah, Cryptics, yeah. Yeah, because all of those, while they are Necron, they don't swear allegiance to the dynasties like these guys do. Yeah. So at some point, we are also going to talk about them and what makes them special. Special. How would you it's their personalities. <laughs> yeah, death marks have personalities. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so the, the next snipey gonna, boys. The, the <laughs> next thing we're gonna do <laughs> is we're gonna talk about uh, how legions are built and how they're assembled on a tomb world and then also within a dynasty itself. Now this is some deep minutia, right? Yeah, here. Yeah, this is for all of you who love this uh, flow charts and. It's nice Random that it exists. Random numbers. It's definitely nice that it exists, but uh, yeah. we're going to get into it. So the smallest unit um, that's created is a phalanx. And a phalanx has 10 Necron in it. That's it. And then... Are there any so specifics you, to them? Nope. You can have 10 Lich Guard, 10 Immortals, 10 Warriors. What about whatever. one of each? Uh, I'm... F- do they have to be the same certain. thing? They have to be the same. I'm fairly certain, yeah. Because so from now on, whenever you're a Necron player and somebody calls, oh, I'm gonna shoot that Necron squad, slap him in the face and call it a phalanx. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is a phalanx, you dumb bitch. Yeah. Anyways, so when you have five phalanxes grouped together, they are put under the purview of a lord, and this lord takes the assumes the title of Vargard. Potentially, this is just the example we have. And so this Vargard Lord is, is commanding 50 Necron, and that's one cohort. Okay? Okay. So there's 51 Necron in a cohort. Okay. You get two cohorts together, 
Mm-hmm. So that's 102 Necron. Now you have a Legion. Mm. Okay. And a Legion is commanded by an Overlord and then probably the Overlord's court. Sure. And this is... Uh, um, okay, sorry. That so there's an Overlord for every 102 Necron? Well, so that's for ruling because... Yeah. You had phalanxes, and you have at least a hundred of them under a lord, and then that lord is you a have, part of a no, cohort. You have five phalanxes. Oh, five. Under yeah, a sorry. Lord. Yeah. So you have at least five hundred. It'd be seven hundred and two then, in a legion. Oh, a legion has a hundred and two. Yeah, these numbers don't super make sense. I wish I could see this chart as well. Just go to the Necron page, on Lexicanum. It's there. But. Yeah, so there are two cohorts in each legion, and a legion says it's commanded by an overlord in his court. But it's going to get much crazier. So it says a legion has access to uh, cruisers, escorts, cryptic conclaves, attack craft squadrons, super heavy phalanxes, triarch judicator battalions, death mark guilds, destroyer cults, flayer cults, war engine cohorts, and canoptic swarms. And that's what a legion is capable of controlling. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> so, and you can have many different legions. And if you have all the, le- like, let's say you have five legions, right? So each of those five legions has two cohorts in it. Then you have the level of Decurion. And a Decurion <laughs> is commanded by an overlord given the title of Nemesaur. And the, his court has overlords and cryptic advisors to the Nemesord, and he has a Vargard lord. And this would be very similar to Nemesor Zandrek and Vargard Oberon, right? Of course, of course. Maybe I don't know. Like the the numbers are really weird. They don't make sense because yeah. how can you know. how many how many overlords are there? Yeah, exactly. Well, technically, they're all just lords so given the title. Of here's overlord, here's right? the thing, though. So, like a cohort. Cohort, cohort yeah. yeah. So that will have 100 warriors. No, 50. Oh, sorry. But every every cohort, yeah, you have at least co- two cohorts, potentially no, more. it doesn't say at least. It says there's two cohorts yeah. per legion. So that's 100, though. In, in one legion. Yes. yes. But you can have an unlimited amount of legions. Correct. Hmm. Sure, but that means you have an unlimited number of, of lords, yeah. Yeah. Lords. Like this, mm. I don't know okay, if I fully enough. agree with how this flow chart It doesn't works, make sense. No, no it's too few, for yeah. sure. I thought you could have multiple cohorts, so you have no. infinite. Yeah, it would have been better if you would have like 30 cohorts in one legion. Or like yeah. X. And each one ruled by a lich guard instead of a lord. Like I think that scale would be better. Yeah, yeah that would To start with a lord right off the bat seems a little ridiculous to okay, me. Okay, so we found plot hole number... 847 everyone <laughs> jot that down right. so jot that down <laughs> so jot that down so we're at i like the names of this more so oh, than yeah. the exact it's numbers. way cooler like, knowing that tesserarion is pretty mm-hmm. cool and knowing the decurion yeah. like i like all that kind of stuff so let's say you have five legions they're ruled over by the decurion and the decurion their assets that they're able to pull from are cryptics triarch praetorians tomb blades ghost arcs flayed one packs attack craft Death marks, war engines, super heavy assets, destroyers, and canoptic scarabs. And then, when you have multiple decurions, you have tesserarians. And these are ruled by a Nemesaur overlord, the Nemesaur's court, so bodyguards and advisor to him, as well as lichguard. And a tesserarian's assets are going to be in the this is more void craft. So this is tesserarian flagships. Planetary assault craft and drop ships, escort squadrons, super heavy cohorts. That's probably where like your megaliths come into play. Mm-hmm. And then the very at the very top, you have a tomb world command. So this is ruled by a regent primary overlord, a regent's court, so overlords, lords, and cryptics, a vargard who is an overlord, and a lichguard who are bodyguard to the nemesaur. So what I'm getting, yeah, is there, there's definitely a lot of lords. There's going to be like hundreds of lords on a planet. There very well could be. But so, th- yeah, it, it, it definitely changes my perspective. So maybe it's not wrong. It's just very different than how I envisioned it. Maybe just lords don't necessarily have to have a whole planet. To exactly. Themselves. No, That's of course not. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, I think because you said there's, that there's definitely more plan more lords than there are planets, yeah. and not ruling over a planet doesn't not make you a lord. Yeah, okay. you're still a lord even if you don't. So rule there's a, a butt ton of lords. Yeah. Hanging the, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. there's going to be potentially hundreds on a planet if you have populations of millions. Like, yeah, yeah. and every fifty. Every fifty, uh, see warriors that number seems a little much to as me. As a lord, that that seems a little much. Yeah, because I, because the popul is the general population that made up these warriors, yeah. these phalanxes, right? Yeah, there's no way there's a noble for every fifty people on the planet. That's way too many nobles. Yeah, I think their numbers are a little off. They're off for sure. Yeah. Well, you know what, Games Workshop, just try again. You know, try just again. Come back. Submit it again yeah. to Lore Hammer well, next exactly. time. Yeah, what yeah. is the, uh, has anyone figured out what the psychic awakening for no. Necron would be? No. That's not. There is, we're not psychic. Oh, that's right. Psychic awakening has nothing to do with psychic. Yeah, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, it doesn't. We all know that. So we're just going to get things. Bullshit. <laughs> GW just rolls dice with titles. Uh, they, it's part of the oh, game. Yeah, no, they have like the names written down. Yeah, they like roll dice. Blood, psychic. You know, they just roll dice. <laughs> <laughs> they have all these. Yeah, fuck. like GDGW marketing adjective team. noun adjective noun table. Yeah, it's just a, a Mad Lib. Yeah, well, you know, you, you've seen like they put the name generators in the yeah in the in the supplements. Well, they GDW. just did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't list the last thing. Which is the assets that a tomb world is capable of with drawing on. And they are tomb world flagships, tomb world capital ships, tomb ship squadrons, secondary escort squadrons, satan shards, and this is the interesting that that to me is very interesting. Yeah. Auxiliary forces, orbital defenses, and the last interesting thing, doomsday weapons. Yeah. Yeah, there's some cool things in there. Doomsday weapons, Satan. Orbital defenses, sure, sure. Capital ships, tomb ship squadrons, like uh, the other interesting one is even uh, Tesserarian flagships, auxiliary forces. Because to me, in my mind, that would be like they've mind scarabed uh, a Xenos race and are using them. Yeah the the odd thing here is that uh, <laughs> death marks, flayed ones, and destroyers yeah. are called multiple times auxiliary forces, yeah. but those are listed previously in Legion assets and exactly. Decurion assets, and yeah, that's I also makes me think that auxiliary forces are some type of Xenos, yeah, yeah, that they have under their control, right. or even that of sworn fealty yeah. to them that they're just using as you know um, yeah. cannon fodder or whatever, yeah. It's very cool. I like some of the names for sure. It's nice to have the names. Oh, I like a Decurion. Decurion yeah. yeah, like this is my Nemesaur and everything. Yeah, like, to give to be able to give everything titles is really cool. Yeah, I wonder if you could build an army in Eighth Edition while maintaining the structure of that. Why not? I'm just curious. I I don't know. Well, it depends on curious. how high up you want to go. Like that's a lot of points. Yeah, sure. We'll play an Apocalypse. Like, each cohort, uh, <laughs> 110, 500... Each cohort is going to be like 600 points minimum. Sure. And there's two cohorts Build the per list. legion. Build it. I got a lot of space marines. You need two legions for a Decurion. I got 13,000 for... points of Knights and Titan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so let's get to her. Yeah. <laughs> need a big um, table. <laughs> you need a big table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's kind of uh, what we have for our notes. Got a couple of free flow points here. Um, Lay it on me, big girl. So the one, the one thing is uh, now Necron. They come. F- you you can actually make Necron unique. Where back in the day, <laughs> so disturbing watching you rub your nips. <laughs> Who's doing it? All three of you. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, stop rubbing my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can you can give your own flavor to your dynasty. So what are some ways that players can kind of give their own flavor to a dynasty? Like either painting them, make how would you go about making them unique? Make put your own twist on them. Um, In terms of story or like your list building, any anything story list building model design. Well, like I don't think they have a lot of opportunity for like kit bashing. Not a lot of kit bashing, but at the same time, so they're heavy living- conversions though. Super heavy conversions. You like you're not m- kit bashing like an imperial like a, a space marine kit with Necron no way, but 
Like, there's nothing wrong with you adding four Necron arms onto this Necron body. Like, okay. like a lord? I don't know. Like a Necron lord? Like, to me, that would qualify then as a destroyer cult guy if you wow. took it to that. Yeah, because now he's, he's not modifying his he's and modifying he's, his structure. Yeah, so? past, past modifying limits. can happen all the time. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong. I with think that. forearms sounds like heresy. Extreme. Destroyer cults specifically are insane, though. I think you'd have to be insane to corrupt your perfect Necron body. What if you are unhappy with the one that you were given, and you you look you're, at someone else and you're like, that's man. how destroyer lords are made. So Illuminor Illuminor <laughs> Caesaris. Yeah, take a look at his model. Okay, because that is not a member of the destroyer cult, and yeah. yet he has a spider body. Mm. Yeah. So sure. bad lore, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and yet every single Necron who's a destroyer yeah. who is insane and loves battle made their body the exact same. Bad lore. Oh, oh, okay. No, like y- there's nothing wrong with manipulating the bottles. Like warriors, mm. like any Lich Garden yeah. below, I would say mm. no go. You can't do it. Oh, but sure. Okay. Anything For else. A little bit. Like, sure. It's a lord. That's yeah. the sure. Difference. But like, like your warriors have to just look yeah. like warriors. Of but, course. So yeah. here's the one thing I was thinking. So like. We do know that they change the texture of their body depending on like it depends well, on the crown world. Yeah. Yeah. So like you could like say like this crown world you has spikes on their shoulders. You could give them like dark eldar spikes on their shoulders. Well that's different than textures. Why why would you not be able you so you can add whole arms but you can't add a little spike you can't not to give warriors. A little, why not? Because that's not a texture. That's and, adding things to the actual living metal. You're growing different appendages no it's just shaping the metal into okay more pointy shoulders then yeah like flares or whatever i disagree with you completely on the spikes but <laughs> I, I i don't think that you should be able to modify the way warriors look at all because they're just mindless why would any because they, 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 they shouldn't be unique but they do yeah, get modified not unique, but they do like textures they definitely have different textures but wouldn't that be based more on uh like the the lord or overlord. Or yeah, whatever. it is based yeah. on the dynasty and yeah, what, the it's dynasty. it's not a personal thing that right. they do. It's the dynasty. Yeah, they have no that choice. dynasty, yeah. they're all gonna look uniform. Yeah. Like, what if it's the dynasty of the spiked crown? So they like every warrior just has spikes. I don't like it. So you don't like it, or don't think it's possible? I well, I don't know what's possible. I'm just here as all I do is play Space Marines. I don't Anything nothing exists outside possible. of that. That's okay. the spirit, Jordan. <laughs> that is the spirit. <laughs> Okay, but sure. So maybe spikes are a little too much. Texture paint, though. That'd be a great way to unique your army. Cover oh, them for in, sure. Yeah, yeah. Cover them in texture paint. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just thinking of different ways to kind of add your own flair to it. Because, like, I, I try to always build different armies and stuff. Like, even me and Christian will always just talk about fucking made up armies. But we never talk about Necron because there's not a lot you can really do with it. No. Like, I, I think, like, the real uniqueness that you can achieve with Necron comes into the backstory. Like, and, and I guess that kind of travels over to how you play. Like if you, like uh, you never fielded warriors in your list. Yeah. You're like, I, I don't like the model. I don't want to use it, whatever. But now you create a reason as to why, like, uh, like during the biotransference, like um, we knew what was going to happen. So instead of, like subjugating all our general population to this hell, we murdered them. Sure, right? Like, uh, you like I think that is like a, a better flavor mm. than adding spikes. Spikes is just a very <laughs> a very simple example. I just think aesthetics shouldn't change. The warriors should just always look like warriors. Sure, sure. Mm. So, but then no let's go back to the easy example of a spike. Would warrior or immortals then be able to change their body to kind of have that no. spike? Okay. Yeah. I like. I don't think. Well, obviously, no one has the ability to change it. Like well, cryptic. Yes, cryptics yes, are the ones yes, that do yes. it. I just if there was like the the dynasty of like the spiked crown or whatever. Yeah. Like that seems like something that would only be afforded to select people. If you were like this, this is like my Pharaon and his like two chosen overlords, and they were heavily modified at that. Sure. Point, sure. sure. I definitely see that. Like, sure. they're given way more leeway, like, even in how the model looks. Sure. Right? So, I definitely see that way. But to see everyone changed that way, what if it was a, just a lot. What if it was a particularly wealthy dynasty, so they just gave all their warriors even, like, the the metal capes? Well, uh, what what dynasty is it? Not Mephrit. Not, I think it's Nih- 
Hella. Fuck. There's a dynasty that actually puts gold through every single including the warriors including the warriors so then why is yeah. that any why is that okay in your mind but not doing spikes because it's just manipulating the living metal isn't manipulating the living metal into a spike the exact same thing as interweaving gold into them i don't i don't i don't see <laughs> your logic in being not okay with the spike idea. i think the spike idea is not what i would do but it's it's just an easy example no you're not allowed yeah <laughs> Because, like, they do it to everyone, that yeah, one they dynasty. Yeah, do, the Nefrek dynasty. Yeah. They, yeah, he has shared it with his trusted servants. Trusted? But even when you see their models, they're all painted that same kind of way. Yeah, even the lowliest can activate traces of metagold within their metal bodies. So does that open up a whole new modeling possibility for you? Nah, not for me. Maybe for someone else. Oh, sure, Sure. Yes. Like the, yes. 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 Yeah. Like I, I think, like I, I was also a big guy when third edition for third edition Necron, yeah. and like the uh, everyone looked the same. Yeah. And there were was no personality at all in Necron. So the, I don't know. Even like the stories I have, it's all about beating down like the Necron and slaves and sure, trying to keep them under the heel. Sure. Right. But it just seems that there is a line that the cryptics and the Necron themselves don't cross. Like, even though you have examples of them manipulating the living metal to add traces of what they call meta gold <laughs> into the body. It's the gold like, inside the gold. But they, <laughs> they still, there still is not a single example of them changing the shape. Sure. Even in stories. Sure. Right, like, sure, and they're like the bigger guys, like Anrakir, Trazen, Illuminor, Emotech. They're all very unique. I mean, as Necron get right, like, sure. I can look at them and differentiate. Other people might not be able to. Sure, but to say by, by your thought process, though, it's just like saying, like, okay, so all the Primaris Marines look very bland, but if you went and put a bunch of fur on Primaris Marines, that would be nothing like their model range, but that would be totally a thing. But there is do. a model range with a bunch of fur on them. And that would be space wolves. Yeah, not really though. They have. There's no pictures. There's no there's, artwork of it. There's a butt ton. There's there so might be. much. Oh my god. There is it. models. Like if you look there's, up the. If you sure. look up. The, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, then another example. Um, <laughs> feathers of Raven Guard. I don't know. It's they just, come with that. That's part of the. Sure, that's why sure. he, was, he he thought of it, and then he was like, "Shit, there." There has to be one. something out there. Yeah, like, but all I'm saying is that there's just many examples of different things on Space Marines. Sure. For whatever reason, but of Necron, there isn't. Like there, even though like colors slightly change and like textures slightly change, in the end, like they don't change the way they look. Yeah, you are okay warriors. with adding four arms. Onto a lord. <laughs> sure. Make him, make him insane then. Make him a destroyer lord. Sure. 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 Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Send, send us what you guys think because Eric won't ever be able to win me over on this one. Probably not. I have no desire to. I don't, I don't care enough to. Yeah. You don't play Necron. I do. I will though. Okay. Have fun. <laughs> and I'll be way more into it. Oh, you'll, you'll be, be so good. I'll All be your way, scarabs. I'll be way more into it. I'll have a fully painted army. You'll be way more into Necron I'll be than I beating off to him every night. Do you do uh, that? Yeah. I don't so think you do. He's going to start off with a Canoptic army, yeah, but then, then it's going to lose. He's going to lose three games, and he's going to be like, shit, maybe I should add Rippers into my list. <laughs> um, oh, actually, the fire, the fire. <laughs> I'll let you know my uh, fucking <laughs> ratio of win to loss, and it's pretty fucking good. I'm still winning more than I'm losing. What's your, ty what's your Tyranid ratio with our friend group? Uh, still, I'm winning more. Who did you win against? I've won against Ian. I won against that Chris guy. Like, he Chris isn't in our friend group. Oh, okay, but he still does play, and he's not like he still has an army that's decent. It's getting, it's getting spicy. I don't man. know. <laughs> You're a piece of shit, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's mad that he's changing his own army list. Wow, you you change fifty points because you you get a codex drop or yeah, a codex increase that's right. or a decrease. Well, you're not adding another big bug. That's the problem. If you added another big bug, no problem. There's no points. There's not enough points. <sighs> Take away upgrades. 
they would be f- we don't need to get into this i'm in the right <laughs> not i'm morally day. right <laughs> yeah morally it's a moral victory for mark perfect glad you agree <laughs> so you're just not okay with any change for the next i round. don't think for anyone below lich guard sure yeah sure if you okay check this out lich guard all have crowns sure if you made your own crowns and there was a uniformity in your crowns, yeah, I'd be okay with that. For everyone? For Lich Guard. Because oh. they have crowns. Sure. Right? They're given like headpieces. Or you modeled tassels for themselves. But like if you were to give warriors tassels, I'd be like, no, no way. That's an, that's an honor given to Lich Guard only. Sure. Right? So to give anyone else that, it just lessens the honor that Lich Guard have. Right? But if you want to ma- model like a different kind of tassel... Sure, go for it. But Lich Guard don't have cloaks. You only see lords and overlords with with, sure. with like capes. Sure. But you want to give them a special cape? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. But in the end, like they're just they're robots. They're they're carbon copies, right? Like, no, I get that. There's not a lot sure. of and yeah, like the more the more crazy you get with your conversions, probably the nearer to insanity your program is. I don't know. So it all goes back to t- the texture one. What if you had like big fist size knobs all over your guys? That's a texture. Yeah, like diseased. Oh, it's... It's a texture. Yeah, I just don't see that as a holdover from, uh, like, what What did that dynasty originate from? Like, what was... Where, was Maybe that was the what their armor diseased? originally looked like. Maybe they, they preferred yeah. studded armor. I don't know. I think you're being a little not... We know that they do change the texture across yes. the entire everybody. Yes. I don't know. I just don't think you're being open enough to I just, doing it. You don't ever see examples of it. You see examples. because people aren't creative. And this is the point of know. this. Was, it's Games How can Workshop. you be more cre- Yeah, they are not very creative when it comes to anything outside of Space Marines. And even then, they just super soldier, super soldier. So, I don't know. There's a lot of variety in Eldar. Sure. Yeah. I think, I th- my just thing is that I, when I think of Necrons, I don't want them to be unique. I don't want them to be special. I want them to be Not very on an boring. Individual level, but dynasty to dynasty would be special. They would be different. Yeah, I like I understand what you're going for. Yeah. I just don't want that to happen. Okay. Like I mean, if okay, you did I'm, it, I I'm wouldn't be like, I'm not person. playing against you. Oh <laughs> god, no. <laughs> but if you but if you're like, yeah. do you think that this would happen? I don't want it to, and I don't sure. think it should. Okay, fair enough. But I don't get votes, right? It's the GW, GW marketing. <laughs> the G- <team>. GWMT. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. I'm moving past <laughs> it. I would rather see stories written. I would rather you like. I would rather just see your story match your play style. Sure. I think that's way cooler in Necron. Oh sure, that's cool in every army. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right, we got some questions on our Discord, and then we're going to be done this episode. Um, It's loading. I'm going to answer all of them first so that we'll have an expert, (laughs) and then Eric will clean up the pieces. So we got a nice nice question here. Do Necrons dream of... (laughs) All right, moving on. (laughs) No, go ahead, sorry. (laughs) Canoptic sheep. Oh, I'm close. Uh, (laughs) Do Necron dream... I wrote a story and I said with malfunctioning program, they experienced something like dreaming, but I don't think they actually dream. No. I don't think programs can dream other than Google. Are there ghosts in the machine? No, there are no ghosts. Okay. There's no, (laughs) there's no ghost. There's no trickery in in these machines. It's it's pure science. That's (laughs) Isaac Asimov, right? He wrote that one. The ghost in the machine. No, I Exactly. Next Robot. question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you guys think of Trey's and the Infinite's remarks about meeting one of the lost Primarchs? He mentions in the second Bale novel that one of the Primarchs was almost captured by him, and Bale mentions that one of the lost led his legions to Trazen's tomb at one point. Sure, <laughs> I guess. I know, it seems like another one of those weird throwaway lines yeah. that sure it's possible. The thing is like that would have been an M30. None of the Necron would have been awo- awoken at that time. Unless yeah. Trazan... Could have dug one up. Oh, sorry. Wait, what are we talking about? Upon one? Yeah, but they would all be sleeping, though, and it takes yeah. potentially centuries to wake up a lord. Yeah, yeah. The 
hold on. So he met a Primarch? Or he, he talked about meeting a Primarch? Remarks about meeting one of the lost Primarchs. He mentions in the second Bale novel that one of the Primarchs was almost captured by him, and Bale mentions that one of the lost led his legions to Trey's End's tomb at one point. I don't know. I, I don't, yeah. That seems like such a throwaway line. Yeah. Like, what could it have been Vulcan? Could yeah, it have been Dorn? Uh, to me, it's more just the timeline. That's yeah. 10,000 years Dorn. before. It's always 10,000 <laughs> years before they would have met in the first place. I think that was just an author trying to. Sometimes the authors just try to write yeah. stuff to catch you, and I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> it's not. I don't quite see why it or would be. Or maybe the author is just not very well informed. It's possible, too. Like, there's so much 40K content. Like, how can you keep up with all of it in the first place? So, Treason is also like a. A collector. Yeah. So th- there's that Marvel character. I think he's called the collector. Yeah. Yeah. And like Trazen is effectively the same person as him, just traveling the galaxy. How long has he been traveling the galaxy? I don't know. <laughs> long time. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I uh, to be honest, I don't know enough about Trazen. Yeah. The infinite. It, and it's only the recently infinite. that his story has, because he was in the, the latest, um, like he was on Cadia. Yeah, like when it when it blew up. So he's been in like a lot of recent stories, but prior to that, there was like nothing yeah. about him. I, I so. guess he was around during 30k because somehow he captured a bunch of uh, um, space marines and unleashed them during the fall of Cadia. Yeah, so, so he he maybe was around. I here, guess here's some here's why Trazen is dumb. <laughs> okay, so this this is just off Lexicanum. I'm just gonna pick a couple of these because this is what he has in his collection. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the preserved head of Sebastian Thor. Sure. Uh, how? Why? How? Why? Yeah. Why does he have that? Okay. A giant <laughs> man wearing Baroque power armor. Yeah. A perfect clone of Primark Fulgrim. <laughs> of course. A troop of Harlequins. Mm-hmm. Like why does he have a whole tr- like I, he had like pretty sweet. That's why does he have a twelve, collection? Why does he That's have a pretty 12, nice collection? A twelve there. foot tall crork <laughs> in power armor more advanced than Astartes power armor. <laughs> well, yeah. it's old Astartes, not new Astartes. I would have no, to that, read like, more. That about would be him. from the War in Heaven. But what should he be collecting if not those? Yeah, like know. what's your problem with them? He's a collector. He's yeah, collecting. Sure, and then to be like he talked with a lost Primark. He doesn't talk with lost Primarchs. Why not? He collects them. He maybe he tried has to a clone of Fulgrim. Maybe he, he has, tried to. He has a Custodes in his so, collection. Yeah, he tried to capture the Primarch and it didn't work. To I me, don't. it all comes back to timeline. Like, I, when? How long has he been active? Why? Is he would he, have been active for at ever. Least, uh, maybe he never. He's went infinite. To sleep. It's in his name. Yeah, I know. Wow. It just how yeah. did that come about? I would need to learn more about him. If, if he's been awake the whole time, it just seems like that's such a crazy thing. Another bullshit thing about him is that he sends, like, there's multiple tri- The reason he's called the Infinite is because there's multiple copies of him running around doing Sure. That. So the Trazen you ran into <laughs> on one planet may, that's, isn't necessarily So the maybe Trazen one of them was to. trying to capture him, one was talking yeah. to the... Pro- like, I don't understand why we have a problem with this guy. He sounds like a baller. He's just going he just around collecting stuff. He doesn't stuff. fit with any of the other Necron. Like, there's no Necron like him. Yeah, he's just a fun guy. He is very unique. Which is, I like him. Seems not Necron. And he worked with Belisarius Call, he, and I don't like that. <laughs> if everything oh, that like he that had... Either. Oh, now, okay. now <laughs> you're off the train. Well, you found one thing that isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> and I disagree now. Okay, now he kind of... If everything like that, that he had was collected from M40 and beyond, it'd be cool. It'd be a cool character. He wakes up, something's flawed, he has to collect things, it'd be cool. But it's just like... It, it's, just, it's just around too long. He also apparent, allegedly unleashed much of his collection against Abaddon. Yeah, bunch of space marines and shit. <laughs> but like, why are they fighting for him? Well, he doesn't. Necron don't like chaos. No. But why would they be fighting? Why for is him? his collection like he has a custodies? Let's say he unleashed. They're basically that. A slave. He, used, he has used, a clone of he, Primarch Fulgrim. He used advanced canoptic scarabs to tell him what to do. There, <laughs> there are some of the, his things that I actually really like that he has. So he has an ossified husk of an enslaver. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> sure. He has a Satan shard. That's cool. That is yeah. something that Necron would have. And as like he has, as an individual, he has that, right? So, 
a damage, but like still he's functioning just, webway portal, that fits Necron, the Necron bill. Because they always were he's looking for He's probably got the Ark of the Covenant in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> they were always looking for a way to get in the webway, so yeah. that makes sense. Oh, he has Inquisitor Greyfax and her retinue, but they escaped. Dun, dun, dun. But the clone of Primark, Fogrim. No. He well, he's escape. in stasis. They weren't kept in stasis. <laughs> they all kept in stasis. I'm going to keep up making headcanon to make this work. <laughs> so you can just stop right Next now. Next question. <laughs> Um, what is your guy's favorite thing within the Necron lore? You can probably yell about what's best, probably. <laughs> um, favorite thing? Um, the customizability of the warrior model. Of course, of course. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> the amount of freedom you have. <laughs> I just like how calling. old they are. Sure. Having any race that's like so friggin' old is kind of awesome. Yeah. The, yeah. They're sure. the oldest in the galaxy at this point that we know of. Oldest left. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you like about them? They're old. But they're, they're the connection to a bygone era. Sure. Right? Yeah. To a world that yeah, we've never seen before. Trying to keep their like the, their way of life preserved and alive through the, the Praetorians yeah. and codes. But also there's like a lot of mystery around them. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Like who are they? What, what world? What was the galaxy like uh, when they were living beings? Yeah. There is a lot of information about that, isn't there? No. There's no like paragraph, but not really. Like, how did it all work? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't realize we needed to know what. What their, were their actual what's interactions their favorite with foods? the old ones? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I kind I kind of like that aspect of them. How sure. their ancientness. That's Eric' cool. favorite aspect. I think I like the the Satan. Sure. The str- the power struggle that existed between these like the the beings of the satan and the race of the necron and rising up and sure. overthrowing your master and destroying sure. him and now just using him as a battery <laughs> James <laughs> um i like the narrative of it it is a cool narrative like just uh your vices becoming just kind of consuming you and making you i don't know corrupting you it's a cool narrative of like their their desire to be immortal is what makes them it kind of it killed them so yeah, yeah. it's an interesting it's it's ironic they're that, hubris yeah it's just their narrative as a species is very interesting well that is also that does kind of uh contrast a lot with egyptian mythology like the, trying to achieve immortality and actually a lot of uh ancient myths in the near east is like centered around people trying to uh achieve immortality so it, it's it kind of it seems like that aspect kind of bled into the necron yeah uh, maybe they're the ones that left those stories with us they dropped <laughs> maybe them. yeah because earth is a tomb world uh, of course it is, is yeah, yeah we're all world. tomb worlds <laughs> um my favorite aspect is i really like the the master program mm-hmm. like just something that like sure, Necron are old, but they're not really. They were in stasis the whole time, where the Master Program has been around and active right. for like sixty million years. Like yeah, it, yeah. Um, I, I really like that. Was that, it like, initiated when they went to sleep? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. read something, uh, and it was kind of a throwaway line. Yeah. But it says the Necron, uh, like ravaging the galaxy a billion years before humanity oh sure <laughs> yeah. crazy. like that's yeah the war it, so then that's even crazier than for like a master program to be around for a billion years like yeah yeah but yeah. i haven't wait so they went to sleep 65 million years 60 ago. million years ago yeah they went to sleep so between a billion and, 60 and 65 <laughs> million years ago that could have been the war in heaven but when was the massive right? program initiated like, when they went to sleep is it, yeah, wait. So that would still only be like 60 yeah, it's kind yeah. of a that, throwaway I, line i don't know if you want to take that too seriously because that's insane then <laughs> if they've the been Oh my god. The, the, the problem is, is a billion people years always make their mark on things or they don't know <laughs> and they just a billion yeah. years. Yeah. It's why it's a but, long yeah. time. It's hard to conceptualize a billion years for us. Yeah. It, wait, how old the universe is only what? Like 20 billion years old? I I, I think the estimates of oh, the 6, galaxy 000? is like 4.5 billion. All right, so 6, here's 1000. Here's what it says in the codex. In the beginning 
The race <laughs> that would become the Necrons began their existence under a fearsome, scourging star billions <laughs> of years before mankind evolved on Billions. Terra. Yeah. Okay. With an S. That yeah. hurts my brain a little bit. <laughs> but whatever. They are old beyond knowledge. <laughs> they are as old as dirt. <laughs> <laughs> like at that so, point, that's barely an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not. An ex- it's literal. Yeah. Earth yeah. probably wasn't even formed at that point, right? You never yeah. know. It's uh, fucked. It's fucked. <laughs> Next I question. Love, I love Games Workshop's oh. numbers and timelines. Sometimes. Oh. <laughs> Are the Satan like utilizing some other race to take revenge on the Necron? Maybe some young and upcoming race, some race that weirdly started doing well and a large proportion of their fighting force are donned <laughs> helmets of head to toe and battle suits. Next question. Are you talking about Tau? <laughs> yeah, it's just making a joke. Oh. I don't, I don't oh, know. is like the Satan <laughs> behind the greater good? Yeah, I don't. Oh. I like that. You know, you know what Like, is not canon, but I see around a lot? Uh, it's these like posters... It's like uh, like rise up against like your enslavers paid for by like Mephet Ran, who is the mm-hmm. deceiver. Yeah. And it's like all these posters about like how your overlords are like oppressing you and like pushing you down and like under the Satan you'll have freedom. They're like these political posters that would be handed out from like Necron Warrior to Necron Warrior. Yeah. And it's just hilarious to see. It's like so it's, <laughs> is Mephet Ran also trying to squeeze in on the greater good? And <laughs> you know. That's funny. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, there is no Satan <laughs> behind the Tao uh, that we know of. This is more of a quest. This one, uh, we all just need to say calcium for the next minute. Calcium, 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 calcium. Just keep saying it till I find the next question. Calcium, calcium, calcium. Okay, calcium, calcium, calcium. Would the Necron treat the Emperor as a Satan and try to use him as a weapon or something? No, he's a false god. But, so but that's the what they do with the no. Satan. No, oh, but like the Satan aren't psychic. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The they, Necron have no understanding of psychic yeah. ability. Yeah. So, so I would say no, just due yeah. to that fact. Yeah. They also don't, yeah, they just, they don't it's care magic. about anyone other than themselves. Yeah, but using something doesn't mean you care about it. Yeah, but the Emperor isn't a Satan. They would use a Satan. Yeah, I get the question. The question is, you have something that's kind of like a Satan in that it's powerful and it has this energy you could tap into. But Why not use it? Yeah. I like the idea that it's it's warp magic, so it, it just doesn't make sense to yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. Is the Void Dragon actually influencing Mars, potentially subconsciously? I ain't saying Cataphractons are just uh, meaty destroyers, but like... I mean, they are. They're literally called Cataphron destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> no, the destroyer virus is from something else anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously he is. He's been influencing it for millions of years. Like you the em- say that for a fact, eh? The emperor literally p- allegedly put him on there <laughs> to specifically form the cult of yeah, um, yeah, machine or whatever they follow. Yeah, the machine cult. Is it actually the void jet dragon? Oh, that's unknown. Like, is it actually the Satan void dragon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? We don't know. It's a being it's- of power. Sure, but it might not be a Satan. It might just be yeah. a chaos demon. Yeah, who knows? Hard to say. Hard That's to say. One of those questions we can't answer. And I don't think GW ever will. No. <laughs> is Cesaric gonna they? bop back into the galaxy? And if so, will the they hero hammer the fuck out of him? Should they do that? Uh, yes, yes, and no. He will come back. Yeah. They will hero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Should they do that? No. no. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, he is already back. Yeah, uh, in the story, he's actually been in the galaxy for a couple, probably a thousand years at this point, because uh, it was at the beginning of Eighth that they introduced him back into the galaxy, and that was before the Indominus Crusade and all the Gray Shields. I so he's been back. Me if I'm wrong, yeah. Where do people keep getting this M42 number from? What do you mean? Like the year the, the the timeline's now set in M forty two and I'm not sure how that's possible. Because M forty one Reboot said that like M forty one is done because it had been M forty one for so long and he advanced. Oh yeah, I guess he advanced sorry, no, the I, calendar. I, was, I guess yeah. there's a difference between when you write when you say M forty one or M forty two and when you write forty two. 
Because if you write 42, yeah, that's wrong. It's 41 on the date. And that's what it should be. Sorry. So when you... Like, we are in the 21st millennium. We're not in t- 2001. 21st century. Oh, sorry, century. We're, we're in the third millennium. <laughs> yeah, we're in the third millennium. Or, yeah. Yes. 21st yeah. century. So, yeah, yeah. Three, sorry. When it's but a we're th- in 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. It's minus one, essentially. It, yeah, yeah. So... Tw- the 42nd it hasn't been millennium years. is 41 something. There's oh. no way he's been around for a thousand sorry. years. Sorry. 732M41 is the year 41732. 41,732. Yeah. If you say M41, yeah, yes. but it is not the 41st millennium. It's the 42nd millennium. Right. Yeah. Year. So the the whole, he's been around for a thousand years. Yeah. It, that's not true because it's not M40. It's not M42. It's M41. Right now it is M42. No, because only 200 years has passed since the... This is what I'm asking. Why? Yeah, yeah. Where does M42 come from? Is it just people don't know the numbers no, and no, how no, to no. say stuff? So it was it was 999M41. So that's the no, last... No, it was M40, the last record... Was it M41? No, it was M41, man. Okay, sure. It was 999M41 for so long. Sure. Cause, and then when Reboot came back is when he was like, what the fuck are you doing? But either way, if it's M41 and now it's M42, there still hasn't been a thousand years that passed. He's not been in the galaxy for over a thousand years. That's what I'm saying. Mm. <sighs> yeah, maybe not. Anyways, he's been <laughs> around long enough to sure. be going through the galaxy and by proxy and by his... Like, Praetorians are now swarming to him to re-swear their oaths of fealty to the silent king um apparently there was like this scene where uh all the praetorians that could were there and all the ones that couldn't get to him were um like holographed in or whatever so there's like scene where just these thousands and hundreds of thousands of praetorians are like all bowing before cesaric swearing their guilty uh, but if they do and that then, it's just so like i don't i don't want it but anyway it's like uni- almost universe breaking well he's he's nothing other than it um like the leader of a sure. race that isn't awoken yet. Yeah, yeah. But then they're gonna. It's just moving towards them all being a single unified thing, which they. I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Stop it. Yeah. Next question. Uh, all I know is he is in the galaxy. Yeah. And he is. He's coming. Oh lord, he coming. Yeah. Oh, lord. He is. Do Tyranids even care about Necrons not having biomass to speak of? They don't care about Necrons, but they care about the planet that the Necrons they, they, are on. Why wouldn't they care about they Necrons? They can consume metal. Yeah, they they you like they they'll go to mining planets and suck all the metal out so they can they, incorporate it into their bodies. They're chitin, yeah. Very very on small portions. I they think they want to consume it. It's a big sure. it's a big uh, but, hive fleet. Yeah yeah yeah. You they, spread and that they might out. Just need to hold it. Yeah, just put it in the belly. Like, I don't think they go out of their way to yeah, fight Necron. Yeah, I don't think it would be there's profitable better, for them. There's better targets for them, for sure. They eventually they definitely will, don't though. need a lot of hard yeah. metals. But at some point, they will have to. They'll have to. They'll Why? do it before they leave the galaxy. If it's on a planet that's worth them biomassing. Isn't every planet worth them biomassing? Unless it has no atmosphere to speak of. Like, yeah. don't they strip everything? But in that case, it has nothing to do with the Necron. It just is, they're just taking planets because yeah but the necron themselves have resources their resources they could consume i think they would yeah i think it's more just that the necron are there on a planet that they're trying to get more so than they're trying to get the necron's biomass itself Mm. oh yeah no i i don't think they go after they're not going out of the way no because there isn't really biomass to speak of um uh, just scrolling through has anyone ever explained what the Silent King saw in the void? Yeah, Tyranids. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. The I think this needs to be reworked. Like, so everything that has to do with the Silent King coming back is him worried that the Tyranids will consume the entire galaxy and there won't be any flesh bodies left for the Necron to go back into. But nowhere in like the l- latest codex released does it talk about Necron wanting to come back into bodies? Like it seems to be like just his goal and he's not 
Like no one else is like on that same page. And I think that needs to be a little bit reworked. Yeah. They, they either need to say like every Necron has been wishing for this for like millions of years. Yeah. Or they need to change why the Silent King came sure. back. Well, why not? Why can't that just be his goal? Well, because then they won't uni- unite behind him. Because they'll have to. He's the Silent King. But they do have to. They're forced to. Like, yeah, that's, but that's my point is they don't have to have the same goal as him because he'll just make it their goal. No. <laughs> no. I don't ever want. <sighs> I don't understand why they can't be just forced to make that, that their goal if that's what he wants. I guess. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Yeah. In fact, that might make it more interesting if the rest of them don't want to go back. Maybe he's the only one who wants that. Well, it, just to doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because, like, the souls have all been consumed, right? Your warriors have been purged of everything that made them an individual. Sure. What does it mean to go back into a flesh body? I don't know. That's what I mean, for, though. For about soul doesn't mean anything in forty. No, but it's not just their soul. It's their personality, their memories, everything about I, them has it, been scrubbed. If they did, if they like, kind of retcon it to be a little bit more like the way your story is, where the personality is kind of in there somewhere, but it's just well, suppressed that's, heavily. That's supposed to be like you choose whether or not that's a like a whether it's a fault in the program and like nothing sure. is real, or whether it's actual. It's sure, supposed to be but if the they air. do something like that. If they do something where it is actually somewhere in there is their personality is just buried. Why not? I mean, it, me- it just means souls are Fine. even more meaningless of a term in the, in the universe. Well, soul has <laughs> only everything to do with the warp. That's, that's all Does it, it has to do. Yeah. No, it doesn't necessarily. Yeah. There's lots of different things that souls are used for all over in the place. In 40K. Yeah. Besides connections to the warp. What yeah. are they used do for? Do town not have souls? They do, but they're absolutely tiny. What, what does that no, mean? They have a soul, but their soul can't resonate to create energy in the warp. They can't. What does that mean it. that they, their soul because is Because they're a life, tiny. and all life has presence in the warp. Well, what is a soul then? <laughs> Your presence in the warp. Okay, That's then what, a is soul. It, what does it matter if it's consumed then? Okay, you just took away my connection to the warp. Whoop. Because Who cares? the warp is a shadow of what reality is supposed to be. You're supposed to be always connected to it. I don't know where you're getting that's that from. That's why pariahs. That's why pari- like everyone hates pariahs. They don't have souls. Yeah, sure, like, but they not? have souls. What does it mean to them? They, they don't. They don't have souls. What does it mean to them, though? They don't care. If everyone didn't have a soul, no one would be un- uncomfortable with it. They are, <laughs> they're okay with themselves. But having a soul, are having a soul and not having a soul <laughs> means <laughs> nothing <laughs> in 40K. It does because you cannot... <laughs> Okay, contact sure. Contact the warp. Sure, you can't contact the warp. But other than that, it means absolutely nothing. That's a nothing. pretty big aspect of 40K when the immaterium is bleeding into real space. Sure, but if you if you have a soul <laughs> or if you don't have a soul, <laughs> for once it's other me, than your me other argument. than your other than your presence in the warp, it doesn't affect your daily life. If I'm just James going around without a soul, who cares? I well, I don't other care. Other than you wouldn't have a job. Because no one wants to be around you. Sure. But if everyone didn't have a soul, no one would care. No one would be happy. Because everyone would just be depressed. <laughs> is, they have no so souls. So is bas- a soul is ha- being able to be happy? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I That's don't all I'm know. Saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying is like having know. a soul in 40K is very ambiguous alone, as to what it means. <laughs> Stop making me answer these questions. Because like, gotcha. for example, like Sanguinius' soul Girl is floating in around in the warp somehow. Which is bullshit. Sh- it should have been consumed so long oh, ago. It should have been consumed. <laughs> Who cares? Like, <laughs> souls sometimes seem like their personalities. Like your personality. I think it's just memory at that point. Oh, is, is that is your it, <laughs> professional it, opinion? No. I don't. It seems like it's your personality. Any, anytime. I don't know. Because they can talk and interact. If it was just memories, memories right. don't talk. Okay, so if it is your personality, if that's the <laughs> oh conclusion you've come to, then all Necron have had all personality removed from them. I'm not saying that that's what that it back. is. I'm saying that it's ambiguous. Well, what do you because think it is, James? I think it's sometimes some one thing and sometimes another, depending on what the lore is being so written everything as. Everything you hear about how Necron warriors act and how they are, what's the benefit of them getting a life body back? Why? Why is that I, a good thing? I don't know. I didn't write that. That's what the. Why, well, what do you think? The question is like, I, I think if, what do you if think? there is something 
if the Lich King wants to put them back in bodies, I assume that means that they ha- that they'll go in maybe as blanks or maybe they'll go in as like they'll have some sort of personality given back to them. I assume that's what that would so mean. So having a body means you get personality? Or maybe he thinks that's what will happen and he just doesn't understand no, the war. he fully understands. It, he's the one who made the realization in the first place that their souls were being consumed and that they were losing who they were. Sure. And maybe he wrongly thinks he can get that back. I don't know. That wouldn't be bad. If Next he was, question. If he was wrong. Yeah, sure. Maybe he thinks, he's, maybe he, thinks he can put them back into bi- <laughs> bodies, mind, but it'd be wrong. I don't mind wrong. that. Sure. Mind that. We solved it. Solved GW, it. listen to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Next question. Why do you guys argue so much? <laughs> Don't look at me, Mark. God damn it. Because it's fun. It's Eric's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, final question. What are some good uh, stories involving Necrons, like even just stuff about their own empire, how they dealt with other empires? Unfortunately, there really isn't a lot out there that are like Necron focused. No. The- Necrons usually take like the... And the, villain. Pro- the villain, yeah, yeah. yeah of books. Um, if there's a book with a Necron in it, most likely it's like a Space Marine chapter fighting against Necron yeah. or something. So. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like it's probably hard to write a protagonist story from the Necron position. Yeah. Like what? It, like they don't have character. They don't have souls. Well, they do. They, they have do no have personality. They do have personality, and that's oh, why they I, do. Yes, they do. So then, why not just put that in a biological body? Why do you guys argue so much? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you. What you were saying before is that like, oh boy, maybe we're back your in soul it. is your personality. But like, Emotech has a personality. So obviously, that's not a soul then, well, right? So what? A soul is nothing. It's what make it's what it's the spark of life. It's the je ne sais quoi. Like it's the vite. If it's the je ne sais quoi, then I don't know what it is. Well, that's what je ne sais quoi is. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. What was the question? We answered it. What well, are some good books where we can learn about like Necron? That oh. There isn't really like you're gonna want to read just like all their codexes. Yeah, the codex has like good snippets that they like say. Yeah, and that's. That's pretty cool. There, there are some cool books out there. It was recommended in the Discord. Is like, if Fall you want of to... Damnos a Necron book? It is, but it's ultra focused on Ultramarines fighting right. them. So right, like, right. And the, all the, the one with Kadia, like the one with Kadia exploding, yeah. Trazen is in that one. Yeah, if you but get it, a campaign he's, book, Fall He's of, just like a it, side guy, right? Like, side guy and not representative of the race. No, exactly. And I think that's a problem a lot of people make when they read 40K stuff. They're like, hey, this ultramarine said this one line, so that must be what all ultramarines yeah. think. Yeah. And the truth is, like, it's just Trazen, and Trazen's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah. He's got a couple screws loose. Anyways, <laughs> timeline. Couple mark? of living metals. One two seven M forty two. We are in the forty third millennium right now, because we're in the year is forty two thousand one hundred and twenty seven. M three. M forty three. 43rd millennium so, so I, I somehow missed 42. a thousand years somewhere then in the setting because the, the saying's like in the 41st millennium there's only war which that would mean like that's the saying that's the tagline yeah, yeah that GW. would be everything was that would be M, I mean that would be M40, m40 right yeah. but now we're in m43 m42 m42 yeah it's 43rd millennium m42 <laughs> Yeah, so we've still jumped a thousand years. Then. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know how that. Happened. I don't think their timelines are weird. They're fucked. Yeah. It's not a good setting. It's all <laughs> awful. <laughs> Why are we even playing this game? Why are you even do this podcast? This <laughs> God damn. Let's leave it on that. <laughs> uh, Subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah. Help us out. Um, means a lot if you can. Dollar a month really goes a long way. Please help us out. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> follow f- us on all of our socials. Yeah. Uh, yes. Calcium. Reach out to Mark. Mark will respond to literally anything. <laughs> literally. Yeah. You Anyways, send him a message. Let's end respond. it. Let's end it. Goodbye. Peace. Au revoir. <laughs>